Lance here. No pun intended. Concentrating current! Sovereigns, this is how it all ends! You're oh. Oh my god! The second last change with these delays. Oh, that's right. No delays. No secret rebos. Taz can live a Alright. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Right. Nice, nice. Um so welcome guys to uh to the semi-finals of the playoffs. Uh today we have Death Neutral versus X Factors. Uh I am joined with uh, the lovely Andy Sang. Welcome, welcome. What's up? So, 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 uh, how excited are you for this game, actually? <laughs> I'm actually really excited. X Factors destroyed us in Switch. Oh my god. Like, um. It's like, and Destiny Draw is obviously Destiny Draw. Yeah. But, like, yeah. Exactly. I'm really excited. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. Like, um, uh, as we, as we all know, uh, Destiny Draw, uh, uh, Last season's champions, uh, season six, and yeah. and I think they went undefeated uh, in their season. Yeah, it's like fifteen and zero. It's insane. That's insane. And uh, we have uh, on the other side we have uh, X Factors, uh, who are doing amazingly this season in their in their first, I think in their debut season. Yeah, this is their first season. So. Um, I feel a little uh, infographic uh, by uh, our lovely uh, analyst slash uh, graphical team uh, presented by the Xerox. As you can see, we have a Destiny draw uh, currently uh, in the in the regular season eight and two, first in the division, and obviously uh, best team was placing. They were the champions, and their key players are Matsu uh, and Tun Tun Tun, both going four and two. In their in the playoffs, and yeah. next and next we have X Factors seven and three in the regular season, also first place in their division, and it, and it is the debut season, and we have Tetsia and Zalug as their uh, key players uh, in this playoff season, and by the looks of it, uh, we have our first player on the table. Yeah, it is gonna be Matsu. Versus Saku. I'm actually really happy that Matsu's playing again. He was um, obviously I'm, I got to meet him at Worlds last year. Yeah. But yeah. then he kind of took a break between um, like Worlds and I guess like last season. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. But uh, uh, yeah, so it's it's nice to see him back. Oh, definitely for sure. Like it's it's great to see all these. Amazing players just battling for the for the spot uh, in the finals. They said that there's uh, no in-game music or like any in-game sound. Oh yeah, yeah, my bad. Uh, I usually no, I never play with uh, in-game music. So. No, they said there's no sound though. Like usually I don't play the music either, but then I'll have my sound up. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Ah. The main box came really early this morning. Crazy. All right, so is there any sound now, guys? All right. All right. I think they started with Dark Magician. Ooh. Dang, that's pretty. That's a pretty hard call. Uh, how is actually Dark Magician faring right now in the current meta? Like, uh, especially uh, after the right, banlist. So. I thought that, like when uh, when the new ban list hit, I I kept getting comboed by full by like balance. Like I kept getting like full comboed by balance dark magician. So I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. maybe this is the new way. But then you know, it's like one of those scenarios where like when you play versus dark magician versus when you play it yourself. 
and then you find that you never have the combo. So then I was like, oh, okay, maybe it's not that consistent. And a lot of people have dropped it for other, just like other decks, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. You still see like some players doing well with Dark Magician just because like if it is your day, you're able to, and you're able to get those combos, it still is really good versus a good number of decks. Oh yeah, if like uh, all the planets in the universe aligned uh, and you one know, of, yeah. the universe like is favoring you. <laughs> one of the big things that Dark Magician has going for it is that a lot of people have cut Cosmic Cyclone from their um, from their decks. Oh, that, that is true, that is true. So in that case, that Dark Magician will definitely be able to uh, not be as much as afraid of like getting their turn one setup completely destroyed. Exactly. So, so it looks like it's gonna be Shmeta and Wishcraft is. So Switcheroo. Ooh, with Switcheroo. Switcheroo. No, do know that it is, it is actually a twenty card version and not the thirty card version that we've seen lately in tournaments. And I would imagine that would mean that they're playing Cosmic Cyclone or something. Yeah, I know that um, that the thirty card version does play Galaxy Cyclone, but obviously it doesn't really help in your first turn. Maybe trying to snipe uh, a set navigation would help. But uh, by the looks like, uh, by the looks of it, the Wishcrafter player it doesn't seem like to have anything to deal with the back row, and it's just uh, depending on whether uh, Matsu does have a life navigation or not. Yeah. Um. One thing to note is that if he's just summoning the Veer into the combo he probably has some way to deal with um to deal with uh navigation so then this is like kind of like the mind game right like yeah. if you don't activate nav then they just have to end face cc and then if you have another circle then you can just do it on your own turn and you're probably fine but exactly. maybe he oh. set the cosmic maybe he like set the cosmic and then like now if you wait till next turn then that's the misplay right yeah yeah so. But, it, but, but it's pretty interesting that he waited to um, do it in the battle phase because now he won't get to do switcheroo. Yeah, that is true, that is true. And there is no navigation response so far, but it does make sense to use it right now, obviously. Yeah. One of the things is that, uh, well, this is a problem with a lot of decks actually, at least like on the side of Dark Magician, they have like searchable outs. Mm -hmm. But a lot of decks, like the engine of your deck is not able to deal with Veer. So then what you have to do is you have to play like traps or like other tech cards that help yeah, you out it. Exactly. And then if, but then if you only draw the engine of your deck, you're probably not going to win. No, because yeah, like you said, you need cards like Karma Cut in order to deal with the fur and, and yeah. Uh, and I mean, it all depends whether the Wishcraft player does have something like a Twister or a Cyclone, and maybe then a Life Navigation or the Circle will be enough to deal with it. But yeah, you're basically yeah, uh, like, reliant on your chest. Doesn't look like he has the Circle. Yeah. No, this is not looking good. Soku is using yeah, Switcher. Yeah, usually room. if you like the whole idea is like if you like give a free turn to a witchcrafter you're usually really far behind because then they'll just like trade all of the spells for real cards on your side while he's playing alistair Ooh. it's a really interesting deck i mean it, do it does make trade, sense yeah. yeah they'll trade all the real cards uh, all of your real cards for like they're like reusable cards and then they'll just add them all back so then like, yeah. you can see right now it's already starting to happen where um he, like a uh, witchcrafter player has five i mean uh Dark Magician player has five cards, and then it's like, you don't count the invocation, it's five to five. But no, no. Yeah. So the <laughs> attack of Elastic is going through, Rod's gonna get destroyed. Um, the I wonder what that set card actually is. So, so far we're on turn five and... I would, I would think it's navigation. Yeah, it has to be navigation still, but, but like, it isn't life. Well, all right. So here's the thing, right? Like he has to draw like the actual circle, because if he draws rod, then that's getting negated by Veer, right? Yeah, yeah, basically. He might already have uh, rod in hand, but there's no point to summoning it, right? Because if you summon it, gets negated. He can't attack with it, because then Veer will protect Alistair as well. Exactly, exactly. So he's basically reliant on getting at least 
uh, some removal like Gormakot or uh, yeah exactly or maybe even set up with a divine red and bait fear into negating a rod but uh, yeah but is this this trudge doesn't get balanced right this should be beat down or something uh let me see uh let me scroll up real quick uh, it should be beatdown, yeah, yeah, because yeah. the skill didn't activate. So, like, like the problem with beatdown is that like, okay, you can boost over the twenty-eight, but like realistically, Veer probably can be a lot bigger than twenty-eight. So I mean, beatdown in a in a matchup against the Wishcraft is uh, it's like it's like uh, there's a saying in Dutch like it's uh, like cleaning your room up while the while your while the toilet is overflowing or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds really this weird might, in English, but... <laughs> this might be okay for... Uh, like, I actually don't really like that Kaliga play. Because if you think about it now, right, you can... Oh, he has Karma. But now you can summon Rod, and then if you negated the Rod, then you can just run over the beer. Yeah. It looks like... Yeah. I don't know, I feel like Kaliga... Like really get a lot going. I mean, I feel I'm like... I'm not Kaliga... a huge fan of this 20 card list, to be honest. It, it feels like it it lacks the power and the push that it needs, that it, that yeah, it usually just... has. Mm -hmm. So there's gonna be an, a main phase navigation, gonna summon a dark magician, and and then a, a dark illusion. So he will be able to boost this Kaliga up to 2800 defense, but that means that he will lose his Alistair, so... Doesn't go for it. Makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Matsu doesn't have a lot going for him, to be honest. Like, yeah. he kind of just did that to get over the Kaliga and to stop another fusion, but if, like, if uh, Saku has, like, any type of Witchcrafter play, right? Like, just, yeah, like, summon yeah. something and then turn it into Veer. But then you, you have to ask the question, right? Like, how many Veers does a 20 card Witchcrafter list play? Oh yeah, for sure. Because I feel I believe that the thirty card version plays two to three. I think most two. Yeah, exactly. So it feels like it might even be bricky to some extent. Uh, well, I mean, it is playing like a witchcraft, like a evoked engine, right? Yeah. And then right now you're kind of seeing the problems. It's you you don't really have the attributes that you need, right? Like, oh, obviously yeah, yeah. The, the deck plays a water and it plays a fire, but Ooh. he had to use the... Oh, he has double indication, that's yeah. really good. But he had to use the fire early, so he has to hard draw another one. Yeah, he's just going to make another Kaliga. Yeah, interesting. So the Kaliga is gonna hit the field, getting back uh, his Alistair to the hand. Says one back row. This is pretty not that great though, right? Because no. like we said earlier, the the Dark Magician has beat down. So if they draw another monster, he can just beat down through the Alistair. Exactly. And then the other two monsters can attack the game. So Maybe that's... hopefully this back row is a real card though. It's live now because he had to use the navigation to negate invocation. He's actually just like one Purgatrio away from winning this game. <laughs> oh. There is the illusion magic, he's gonna tribute over the Dark Magician, activating mm. his Dark Illusion effect. So that back row needs to be something and there's nothing and Master takes the first game. Maybe a little bit greedy from um, the the um, Witchcrafter player side. But maybe, that makes me think this is not beatdown, right? Mm, like what other skills? Like if, could, you, uh, if he had if he had game there, he would definitely use beatdown. Because right? like, if you don't use beatdown, then okay, then like one Alistair stops your play, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, I feel like then, uh, if he had like if he if he if his skill was beatdown, he would use it there so that he could go for game, like regardless oh, yeah, of yeah. the Alistair. Yeah, That's that does make sense. Curious. 
Yeah, that does make sense. I mean, he, he could have just maybe saved his beatdown for later in case that Paco could have stopped uh, the final attack. Who knows? That's fair. So, currently, uh, Saku is 0 to 1, and uh, Matsu takes the first game. Uh, I want to show some very cool uh, data analy analytical stuff, but these guys are just going too fast. <laughs> mm. All right, so it looks like uh, we're gonna have Aster Phoenix, so maybe bring it to uh, uh, Mass Chaos. Ooh, there's a delay, so. Restart. Look, yeah, it looks like restart, yeah. Yeah. Wait, is that Dark Magician restart? Ooh. It probably is then, huh? Yeah, yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that makes that makes more sense, yeah. Yeah, we didn't see the delay at this at the at the last game. Yeah. That's why I was like, that doesn't look like beat down anymore if he's not using it. Ooh, and it's gonna be a Masked Heroes, and it looks like he needs to discard the Increase, which is not the best card to discard. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's definitely not the worst one. Like, no, one no, could no. Be yeah. Like, uh, it's not the famous, like, double Vion with Poly already in hand. Um, like, whenever I see that, I see that, my heart just sinks, like, I'm like, man, why me? <laughs> Why me? <laughs> Why me? <laughs> How come everybody else gets the sack? How exactly. come I have to draw these hands? <laughs> and he, exactly. has, he has the Stratos. This is like the best hand you could draw. Which is oh. Ooh. But like even with the cosmic, right? Yeah. At least you baited something, but let's hope. Does he have the nav too? <laughs> hmm. Yo, what's up, uh, XYC Dragon? Also, for anybody that said hi to me in chat, uh, welcome, welcome. Sorry, I didn't notice you also, guys. Also, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing, but like, I've thought about this before. You could consider, like, uh, if you... It's like the Black Rose thing, right? Mm -hmm. Where, like, if you play against, or, like, someone who's not dumb, and then you have... Like a, like a level three tuner and a level four monster on the field, right? Yeah. Then if they have a way to stop you from making black rose, they would obviously stop you from making black rose. Exactly. So if they allow it, then would you still make black rose? So like in the same sense here, mm. it's like okay. So they see the Ferris, yeah. they see the Stratos. If they don't have Cosmic Cyclone, they would probably chain their back row anyways, right? Yeah. yeah. So would you decide to use Stratos to pop one card and then try to combo like that? Like it's just worth thinking about, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's like um. I, I, yeah. yeah, I see exactly where you're going. Yeah. In the end, he has another mass change, so there's no real punish for this, right? Like he can no. just run over both the um, condition of Dark Illusion, and the opponent has like no real top deck. Yeah, that makes sense, Falka. He wouldn't do that if he doesn't have mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Andy said. Yeah. So it's gonna be the second mass change. Like, I was just saying, that's like an interesting mind game, right? Like, you think about it. Would you... Like, I'm not saying that there's a right play and there's a wrong play, because obviously your opponent could be, like, poker playing you back, right? Like, oh, yeah, you just have to sure. think about it. Yeah. For sure. It, it depends how quick you're seeing the intention of the play, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's, this is like less so about like what's the right play and more about like, like player versus player, right? Exactly. Like, my, like you're, what you're thinking versus what they're thinking. Exactly. At, at some point, you're just like engulfing a five dimensional <laughs> chess. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the best top deck for the Dark Magician player here would be uh, a circle. Expanded. Or expanded. That would be expanded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, Herald, right? Like, or Herald would also be nice. Yeah. Pretty much any top deck here is bad. And you lose to like pretty much any monster that you can summon.
that one in the scoreboard is already in the 10 digit column. Spoilers. Oh man, Cap, you got me right there. Oh my god. I think here I just wouldn't, yeah. I would save it, but, but like, yeah. Yeah, but the thing is like, like obviously if Matsu draw, has karma, he would just karma like on his own turn. Yeah. Mm, this is hard. But this like, hard. like even if you karma, like you can just draw a monster and you would still win, right? So. Yeah. The thing is like without a card in hand, it's really hard to tell what monster's back row is. Like you don't know if it's karma cut, navigation, like it could be anything. Oh yeah, especially when, when yeah, yeah, you're right, because Navigation and Karma Card in in essence do have the same delay in uh, 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 like yeah delay. like if you have no card if, yeah. yeah based on like which you would know about your opponent without knowing what they're handing things yeah exactly exactly so right now uh, Matsu is uh, thinking pretty hard. Who is the co-caster? It's uh, Pikachu song. <laughs> <laughs> one of the like, one of the cool, th really cool things about Japanese teams is because like, they live so like close quarter to each other. Mm -hmm. They like you know like most teams they use like some type of like uh, voice chat like um, when especially when they're playing wars. But Japanese teams they can just meet up in person and they can like oh, especially for yeah. these big wars, they can just like be at each other's house. Maybe someone's like you know like. Serving some, serving some cheese. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. That that would be <laughs> such a like a such a vibe. Like um, like the only person mm. in my country like who I would go to is probably Tom uh, and uh, Miliardo. Like those those guys are like the only players I know that play on a competitive <laughs> high level <laughs> in real life. <laughs> Rip Sharon. I mean Sharon too, of course, but she doesn't play anymore. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to Sharon, the homie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright, so... And just like that, Sock is taking it for X-Factors. Do you have a preference for who you want to win the season? Ooh, that's a question, that's a question. <clears throat> um, like, honestly, I do like both these teams. Uh, um, I am <coughs> quite close with the owner of um, of X Factors, Kiruma. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, like we've cast a few times together, and uh, sometimes we just talk. And he's like a super nice guy, and so in a sense, I do like him to win as well. But uh, Destiny draw, like there are also some players that I know that yeah. are like. So nice. And... Oh yeah, like I talked to like Soon Soon and I were on like we play together in some other leagues. And I obviously know Matsu and like yeah, I think um I like I like Deidre a lot, but I don't want them to win. Like they already won. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> give, me, give me give us some time to catch up. You know exactly. Like back to back. Come on, man. Like yeah. <laughs> Nah, I feel you. Because like, if, if, if they went back to back, then for us to catch up to them, we would have to win like the Three next times. two seasons in yeah, a row. That's, exactly. that's just like too, that's just too much. Yeah. That's too much. Like, if that ever happens, like if Deidre uh, wins the two seasons in a row, like then I would suggest to make another league and don't <laughs> tell all the Japanese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't don't tell. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't invite those guys. <laughs> Oh, this is uh so this is probably witchcrafter it's interesting oh yeah I, one of the things is like uh plasma is just like insane in this matchup right oh yeah 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 like like it, it depends whether you get your plasma as fast as possible or whether uh witchcrafters don't draw into their econs for example because yeah exactly like uh, if... based on like current list I think Storm is pretty popular too, so you can potentially Ooh. like storm the storm the back row and then if, if Plasma has no equips then Edel, the level five can run yeah. over the plasma. Exactly. But if you don't have one of those outs, there's like nothing you can do. No. And then no. at the same time, if you don't have enemy controller, right? If you have Storm, the hero player, like they can put on a lot of pressure. They can just kill you in one turn, right? Like, oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So by the looks of it, uh, it looks like the Soku is uh, starting strong again with the, the Great Wall of Heroes. <laughs> the Great Wall. Of Heroes. 
It's a typical turn one. Uh, typical, yeah. So like he's just uh, searching for his polymerization. Yada yada yada. And setting up for getting up for the draw too. He has the malicious as well. Oh yeah, that's like he has the perfect cards. Yes. That's perfect. probably like that's probably cosmic set. Based on what we saw from the previous game. Actually this is probably bring it. If this is bring it, that's like super good. Uh, th th doesn't bring it also play like treacherous, uh, or uh, and just like one fire, uh, one treacherous, or I'm not sure. I haven't, like, I mean, it, I haven't like it's a possibility. It's oh, I don't think we've confirmed whether or not they do that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's making me feel like this backer is cosmic, and he's thinking about using it just so that he can guarantee it plasma next turn. Yeah, because I feel like if you don't use it now, when are you gonna use it? Well, I mean, you can use it, like, there's there's more things to use it on, right? Like, you can get a holiday with it or something, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think if your goal is to just kill them next turn, then you should just use it now, because, like, hitting a more relevant spell doesn't really do anything. No. Yeah, it has to be CC, of course. <laughs> Man, I'm so sad, because, um... Uh, I, yesterday I was preparing the overlay and, ev and everything with all the graphics and stuff and when they were like yeah. and I was planning uh, when they are switching between decks uh, mm -hmm. I would talk a little bit about uh, about the players and uh, the key players and stuff like that but these guys are just going so fast in like it's it's uh, it's a big difference between like the Western teams and the, Japan <laughs> and the Japanese slash Asian teams, like in a sense that yeah. like, they know exactly what to bring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're going for the Minerva here. Maybe going for uh, Black Rose. Because uh, I'm not. Uh, I haven't played uh, Witchcraft this that much but in a sense like if you can like normal summon the Minerva and use like a holiday to get a level four mm -hmm. yeah okay so he's going for mm -hmm. the smetta gonna send a witchcraft card to the graveyard it's gonna yeah so he probably jam. has a level four in hand already so he, yeah he's gonna use the effect to special yeah That's just one of the really cool things about Witchcrafter. It's like, just because you mill like X cards, like, uh, doesn't mean that you have the same play, right? Like, if you yeah. milled one card different, then it, yeah. So oh, here, yeah, yeah, he's actually sure. going. Ooh, it Ooh, is the treacherous. Wow. It is the treacherous. So he will, but he can chain it. Discard. The, yeah, it's, it's not that amazing because. In the end, he still has a like the veer on the field, but if he, he has a way to make plasma to get to plasma, like if he already has it, and he's in a really good spot. Oh right? yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, true, Zerx. But even even in those situations, like uh, some teams take quite some time yeah it's just like you want to review all your options but, yeah i mean this is top four they probably already thought this through yeah exactly like if you don't know what to send already then <laughs> so he's going Setting a fast roast. maybe that's the that's the econ yeah Ooh. or maybe that's treacherous yeah Oh yeah, they do play treacherous. They can play treacherous oh as well because God, oh, that's disgusting. Oh, that's this so is, disgusting. This is bring it. That was that was really disgusting. Oh my God. Yeah, it was the enemy controller. He needed it. Yeah, and it, no. <laughs> he already has the plasma. I guess it doesn't matter as much. I mean, the econ was definitely the out. That's the problem, right? Yeah, yeah. It all, it all depended on that cyclone. Alright, so 
Uh, if, if that's a monster or back that row, actually, like... That actually makes me think, though, because if the back row was treacherous, you could actually tell that the back row is not cosmic, right? Oh, yeah, because it would have been in delay on their own monsters. Yeah. So. True, true. Maybe that wasn't the right play. Like, maybe he should have gone for Lila. Mm, yeah, trying to force out at least the back row. Yeah. Yeah. Because, in a sense, like, if... if yeah, it, it does make sense, because if... This game is over, because he has a um, Malicious in the Grave with Polly. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, this is already game, but yeah. Oh, wow. And just like that. <clears throat> Saku takes it. Alright, I need to be really fast before they come in. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Um... Let's let's start uh, get some graphics uh, on the board. So we have here um, uh, Destiny draw, and as you can see, like the top three, uh, uh, I believe are playing gonna be uh, Bobby. Ma no, Bobby doesn't play this war, but yeah, it's gonna be Matsu and Haru. Uh, I'm surprised Bobby's not playing right now. He's just like like he's definitely one of the um, the players to look for on that team. Exactly, exactly. Like especially this season, he's been. Uh, Going hard so much. Uh, uh, yeah, even Har yeah, even Haru is like doing quite uh, quite good as well. And uh, oh, Tsunsun's have... negative too. That's pretty funny. Uh, Tsunsun? Oh yeah, <laughs> seven to ten. Uh -huh. I think he went zero and two like like a few times. Uh -huh. uh, I went negative this season as well, so no, no, <laughs> I'm, not, uh, I'm not shooting at him. So. I think it was your first time being negative this season. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunate. Unfortunate for everything. For everything, a first time, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, and we have some key players as well for from Destiny draw. Like obviously, it's gonna be uh, Bobby uh, with uh, mm. with Crystrons and Heroes, and <clears throat> and Matsu with uh, with Cyber Dragon and Heroes. And we saw Matsu play not uh, Heroes or Cyber Dragons or any of those decks. He, he went with uh, Dark Magician and uh, Witchcrafters. Uh, it's pretty interesting to uh, see what like Destiny like what Destiny draws take on the new meta is, right? Exactly, exactly. I feel like finally the meta is uh, changing a bit, a little by little. Mm. And uh, of course, the, the the main deck still is Black Wings, but uh, uh, I'm not sure how much the new box will change uh, will change the meta. Because I'm not, I'm not too familiar with Infinities. Um, I think the box has some potential, but it might not be immediate because um, like uh, the Infinity, like some of the Infinity cards are really good, but I'm not sure if they're really that abusable at the moment. Maybe yeah. when X Y Zs come out, they'll be really good, and then you, you could go back into the box for them if you need to. But at the moment, or maybe there's like some combo that I'm not noticing yet, which is very possible. True, true. Um, looks like that Tsum Tsum is coming on board. Mm -hmm. With uh, Shira. That's a pretty standard answer. One of the things about heroes is that like without once they lost True Nade, they just don't have good matchups into these decks. Exactly, exactly. Alright, so... Um, <coughs> one player is going to be Tsum Tsum. All right, so um, a pretty, um, uh, I mean, a pretty decent opening from Tsum Tsum going with uh, triple back row and Gazuki. Mm -hmm. um, there is gonna be a Ooh, mess change. Really, yeah, I was gonna say that finish is. I don't want to say it's bad, but it's definitely aggressive, right? Because yeah. if they have mass change, you get punished really hard because they have the fairest combo and they can bounce one of your back rows. Oh, so in, in, in a sense, you got already losing two cards. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's going for. Uh, oh no, wait, never mind. It's the attack reduction, and if he wants to, we can still uh, bounce one card. Yeah, guard. I'm not sure how. I'm not sure if I'll use it now or after. I mean, it depends if you want to hit a, a, a possible cyclone. But no, wait. So because the, um, they do, they can play one cyclone if I'm correct. Yeah, but like. Yeah. Uh, 
it would be more likely like whether you want to play around like a yeah. ballista. But more than likely, both the back rows are real. The problem is that if they're both chainable, like if it's like ballista with. Okay, so yeah, he's ballista there, yeah. Like ballista fiendish, then yeah. like not. But I guess it doesn't matter if it's ballista fiendish, because then he would just, he, like, he would just fiendish when we target. Exactly. Alright, so so far the hero APK is strong with Saku. He's still not in like an amazing position yeah. though. Because uh, he just has the blast and then like any level 6 synchro can run it over. Although if he doesn't, Sinsun doesn't top deck like a really good monster or a... Oh! That's, good. that's a pretty good monster. <laughs> that's the perfect monster. Yeah. I was gonna say if he doesn't target something amazing, then like he could just bounce back the last back row and then um, make a push for free on the following turn. Oh yeah. So right now, um, Spectre Sword is gonna hit the field. Spare Sword's gonna exit in the graveyard, lands one time, Kappa. Like the back row is definitely not Ballista, but I'm not sure what it would be. Actually, it might be Ballista still. Oh. Alright, so he goes for the level H for the Shogun Saga. If my any math is correct, 1700, that's uh, that's lethal. Yeah. Yep. And just like that. I mean, this was supposed to be the counter match of anyway, so yeah. it's not the craziest thing. Soonsun takes it for Destiny though, making it 2-2. Two to two. Alright, so far uh, a pretty close war which uh, which I like. Yeah. Alright. Soonsun 1-0 and Mansu is going over, or Sakura I mean is going 2-2. Two two, which is uh, pretty... Uh, Pretty respectable, especially in this stage of the of the season, against uh, teams such as uh, Destiny Draw. All right, so um, back to our, our infographics, we have um, so we have seen this before, like Matsu and Bobby, the key players uh, in the playoffs for uh, for Destiny Draw, and also uh, what I can show you guys is the latest match report against uh, Supreme. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna send you something. Oh, <laughs> all right. It's hang on. It's just it's just really funny. I don't I don't know how I'm gonna like. Don't play it on stream, but it's pretty funny. All right, all right. Um, all right so we have here uh, Destiny Talk versus uh, SEM last week, uh, which was um, not the closest of wars. Like um, we had. Um, uh, Tsum Tsum who had a big role in it, uh, uh, same goes for Matsu, uh, who is currently out 1-2 to two. and Haru was uh, uh, finishing it for Destiny Draw and we're just waiting for Tsum Tsum, uh, next opponent we have either uh, Saku le uh, So left, Smog Anime Girl Priorin or Tetsuya. And talking about those X Factors players, uh, we also have the infographics for X Factors. So the top three players uh, for X Factors is going to be Tetsuya, Priorin, and Saku. And both of these, both of these players, or all of these players, are 
Kern the inner lineup. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, R4, time to bring out the big guns. Exactly, exactly. So, it was to be expected. And the key player is obviously going to be uh, Tetsuya and Priorin with uh, Tetsuya playing uh, A Sabers and Dark Magician and Tetsuya uh, with Blackwing. So, we haven't seen these two players yet, but we can expect maybe uh, to see a Black Wings or uh, or Dark Magician or Isabel. Uh, generally, players. I don't think I don't think Black Wings is a very strong matchup versus Shira anyway. No, no, exactly, no, 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 no. But you could potentially see Saber. The problem with bringing Saber here is that last week, I'm pretty, if I remember correctly, Destiny Draw used Shira Nui as their Saber counter. Obviously, they're they're main decking a bunch of Lancias, right? Yeah, but. If that's like you don't know enough about this version yet to know if they're because like you just kind of saw normal cards where like you saw one ballista, one fiendish, and a gozuki, so you don't know. Oh, yeah, it looks like their counter is blue eyes. Yeah, oh, it's gonna be blue eyes. So it's Tessia that is coming in. Uh, let me just. So, one thing about blue eyes is that the Japanese players and the Western players have a oh, not blue eyes, it's dark magician. But the Japanese players uh, have a very different idea of how to build blue eyes. They really don't like the cards of consonants and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they just play a bunch of trap cards. Whereas, like uh, over here from, um, like, I guess, like the West, I guess. Yeah. Uh, after negative ones, um, Cl uh, Clan Wars deck, a lot of people opt to like play versions of that. Like, mm. they, they usually play the same 20 cards, and if they want to, they add, like, maybe two more cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was the version with, um... Mm. It, it, it didn't play any Kariba, right? Uh, no, it didn't. No. Okay, so that... So, if if the Dark Magician player didn't brick, then that Ballista would definitely miss. Yeah. I definitely agree with using the... Oh, it looks like... Looks like you brick. Oh, but I was going to say, I definitely agree with using the um, Melista on a back row over the circle, just because if the nab summons a Kaiku, then you can't use the exactly. graveyard effects anyway. Exactly, yeah. so you need to take the risk in order to hit the navigation as soon as possible. Exactly, yeah. So by the looks of it, um, uh, Tetsuya didn't bring his uh, APK today, because, uh, well, <laughs> it could still be like a back or like a Garma cut or something, perhaps. And in, in, in that case, he can still easily survive. Um, yeah. That, that would make sense if it's Karma Cut. Like, maybe like Karma Cut with a uh, Magician of Dark Illusion. Yeah, oh, yeah. That would be yeah. really good. That would still be good, yeah. Yeah, that would be really strong. Hello, Jumpy. Would you right now? Would you come maybe he has um, he's um. It's definitely hard to. It's a hard call because yeah, like you might be playing around um a level duplication, right? Yeah. Hmm. Ooh, so he's summoning uh, or the normal summoning the lens here. So he, which means that he wants to protect his uh, spectre sword or yeah. go for game <laughs> also. Oh, okay, yeah, that's also possible. Or he wants to force the back row in a way that is not, like, doesn't leave him with one monster, right? Exactly, exactly. So, huge delay coming in. Uh, I'm not sure from who it is. It's probably coming from, yeah. uh, from Tetsuya. If it is Karma Cut, I think you definitely Karma Cut the Zombie Skull here. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, because if I remember correctly, yeah, he doesn't have another zombie in the grave, right? Nope, nope. Uh, I think that was in Ballista and then level 2, yeah. Does he have another Ballista? Hmm, yeah, if he has Ballista right now is the time to use it. Yeah, otherwise you just get destroyed really hard by Magician oh. Revolution in hand. Oh my god, he had it! Uh, Dark Illusion in hand. Yeah. Oh my god. Now this now this gets really bad for um. For Tunes. For Tunes. Yeah. 
Because the problem is that if you have any type of spell in the like any type of spell you can just activate, then you can just banish. Bad aim. That was a really good hit then. Yeah. So for, for so far, um uh, Toon Toon is pretty safe. Um Targeting the Lancio was really good. Yeah. Like really good, yeah. Because like when is the time you're gonna use Lancia against uh, a Dark Magician besides like negating the navigation? Mm -hmm. Or the good the good thing for Soon Soon is that um, the opponent lost their illusion magic, right? So it's yeah. a lot harder for them to set up the combo a second time. Oh yeah, for sure. Like now he needs, like uh, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe that the the first card to the right could be like a Dark Magician. So he needs to have a really good top deck. Mm -hmm, yeah. It's uh, it's the vibe I'm getting, and let me see. Well, I mean, even if he doesn't draw anything, Soon Soon doesn't draw anything either, right? Because he has Spectral Sword in the grave, but no other zombies. So then he can only get affected. <laughs> you see the thing? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nah, I'm not gonna play this. He goes for the now. Okay. Wait, so uh, that circle, uh, I didn't check. Was that his first card or the card he drew? I think that was the that was the first card. Okay. I mean, Simpson still has a lot of top decks if like he passes on nothing, because if he has um. If he draws Squire, because he already has a Spectral Sword in the Grave, so if he has yeah. Squire, that's OTK. If he has um, Solitaire, that's OTK. Pretty much like any monster, like even Gozuki. Yeah, the one thing he doesn't need to see is a trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or another, like, Lancey, I guess. Yeah. Alright, so it looks like that, uh, um, that's here didn't top deck into any uh, good card yeah so he has a navigation in hand and a card that he drew that oh well, he stacked usual. the deck so he might have he might have stacked something strong but yeah he definitely, didn't turn, stack, um, he definitely didn't stack a dark magician though, otherwise no. he would definitely set the navigation yeah all right so he passes so it might be a lens here that he drew yeah oh my and this God. is gonna be a real game this is the battle of the top. These are these are my favorite type of games when when both players have nothing, and then you just have to like, ideally like it's not like one player topics and the other player doesn't, but you kind of just. Okay, so he set a card now. Ooh. So he maybe top deck. Uh, no, no, it couldn't be. Well, it's I was just... thinking maybe I was thinking maybe he had car he drew Karma cut and then he set he sets Karma. He put Magician of Dark Illusion on top and he left Navigation in hand. Oh yeah, that's definitely a nice play to. Uh... But uh, he sets a card, so he could be playing around. So he did set a card. Yeah. So that's probably Spectral Sword, right? Because pretty yeah. much any other monster who was game the previous turn. And with the way that the back row is not smart to set it. Yeah. He's, he's being very smart to set it, because if it's Karma Cut and he flips it up, he's going to lose both of his tuners. And with a potential Dark Illusion hitting the field. Yeah. Uh, since he's playing this very smart, yeah. in my opinion, maybe recognizing that the opponent set Karma Cut and that he can't get navigation if he doesn't have a monster that's face up. So now it's on Tetsuya to draw a Rod or Kaiku to start like pressuring for damage. Oh yeah, for sure. Like all Toon Toon needs to do is like get enough resources and just OTK through on Karma if he is possible. Yeah. This reminds me of uh, back in the day when you had the uh, alien meta. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, both of the players would set and uh, they would play around the A cell uh, recombination or whatever the card is called. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the first the first person to summon a monster would lose because then you would just go into the um, the, the one that the red one. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. The insect one, exactly. And you would just start popping off the back row, and so I don't know. It reminded me of uh, that matchup back in the day. 
So, oh, it's gonna be a cycle. I'm gonna hit a chain. Double chain. That's insane. I'm not sure I like that Regaki break, right? Because the card in hand is navigation, and he already used illusion magic. So, he doesn't even search anything useful, right? Uh, I think he's uh, pretty behind now. No, I was saying like he, he obviously he did the play that he did to force yeah. the um he loses now. Yeah. He did the play that he did to try to get to navigation, but if he we know he already has navigation because he circled for it, mm -hmm. and that play he did would only work if he's adding illusion magic, which he doesn't have because yeah. he got listed on the first turn. So I'm not sure what that was. What that was yeah, about. Uh, I but even if no Sun had even if Sun had no back row, I don't think. He was in any danger of losing this game. No. And just like that, Tsunsun takes another game, uh, defeating the counter pick from uh, from yeah. Tessia, which is uh, huge actually. Uh, that makes it three to two. And Tsunsun going two and zero. Oh. So right now it's a question whether they're gonna repeat it or not. I think they're just gonna repeat it. Like, there's no way to not repeat. Unless you're not... You don't have that much confidence, uh, confidence in your deck. Hmm. I mean, that's that's how Dark Magician is, right? Like, it's not yeah. like Matsu's Dark Magician did really well either, right? No. Uh, let me see, that's just a bomb player. All right. They're repeating, yeah. All right, so it looks like they're gonna repeat. So that's gonna be the first repeat uh, used by uh, X-Factors. And we'll just jump right back into it. So it looks like he didn't start with the circle or the magician's rod. Like uh, this is a familiar sight to bold. <laughs> yeah. Setting three cards is kind of monka s too because it means that like you can only use one discard trap, right? Yeah. Or like navigation. You only have to worry about one. That is true. That is looks like true. um. Tintin didn't open a monster either, though. Ooh. Probably not gonna activate anything and see what he can draw <laughs> next turn. I mean, to be fair, while we're... we're we're slowly evolving into a trap heavy meta. Uh, okay. Okay, so he did have the life navigation. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, so really going, monk ass. He's going for lethal here, yeah. He needs both the back row to be live. So, like, if either of the back rows is Ballista or Fiendish Chain or something of that nature, then uh, he just loses. Yeah. I think this is a good, like, it's good to go for this. Alright, go straight into the battle phase, and there is going to be a Lancia negating the, the navigation in the graveyard, so... Yeah. What could it be in order to stop but that's the, these decks? Um, that's the play just to survive. Yeah, right? it's a losing play though. He even, like, he even summoned two Dark Magicians so that uh, Fiendish Chain doesn't stop this, you know? Yeah, exactly. So he takes the first. Yeah. Okay, no. 
I think he maybe did that to like try to bluff a wall of disruption. Oh yeah. <laughs> or droning. Yeah. All right, smart so... <laughs> from um, smart from uh, Tetsuya to go for double dark magician. Yeah, basically it's like uh, it's like an uh, elimination of cards. Like you know that you don't need to be afraid of uh, chain that way. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so Tunsu loses his first deck. Um, let's see if he prepared for for uh, dark magician. Probably uh, has his second deck. As a uh, heroes, I assume. Is that what he's been doing? Uh, what do you mean playing heroes? Yeah, it's like the second deck to follow Sharanui. Yeah, yeah uh, no, to follow. Uh, yeah, no, to f defeat Dark Magician. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think, like, um. Compared to Black Wings, heroes rely a lot less on Cosmic to beat yeah. Dark Magician. But we do know that um, Toon Toon last week did prepare to um, double Shiranui. So, did but, he? But, yeah, he did, but just to count to Red White. So, but it, <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like that he didn't uh, go for it this time. So, I mean, it might it might still be, right? Doesn't, uh, like, it could be level dupe and then level log. Yeah, oh, yeah, that does. Can be possible, can be possible. 30 card Shiva. Mm -hmm. I think this might be Black Wings though, like level reduction Black Wings. I don't know if Carly gets level reduction. Uh, I know it's hard Scott... to keep up with all of Yeah. I know Scud does and Carlin. Yeah. Wait, Scud gets level reduction? I think so, yeah. That's pretty hot, I would definitely use Scud. <laughs> Basically saying you're I just using like, it. I just like using characters that like otherwise like you would never get a chance to use. Like I remember oh, yeah, when um, sure, like sure. when Draw Sense high level Ritual Beast was a deck, I would use Chaz because I've never used Chaz before. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh I mean, it is it's um It's no, I was gonna say fortunately it's Witchcrafter. Ooh. I mean Witchcrafter against Dog Magician, it's kind of um well, I draw a karma card, or you, or well, I'm I just lose. thinking like, what's the skill? What's the skill here, right? Because it's not power of dark. No. Like you would think it'd be power of dark, right? Does Carly get power of dark? Hmm? No, I think Carly definitely gets power of dark. Oh, okay, okay. I remember because I have some friends who are super simp about it. Oh yeah. And then they <clears> only <throat> use like, yeah, they they only use like power of dark Carly. <laughs> and like balance Alexis, or uh, I think um, Akiza gets balanced as well. Yeah. Sounds suspiciously familiar, to Andy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, restart? They're saying maybe it's restart. If Carly gets restart, then I can do that. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't check for the delay at the start, so it could be, could be. So, um, there's gonna be the Shmeta on the table. There's gonna be a delay from probably uh, Tetsuya, but um, it's taking some time. Also, I want to say uh, thank thanks to ever everyone for joining the stream. We are at uh, 200 plus viewers. Uh, Destiny draw first X Factus. This match is really um delivering. Oh yeah for sure. It's living up to the reputation. Like I remember when uh, when they asked me to uh, to uh, stream this match I was like yeah sure uh, yeah you're gonna stream the Friday uh, game and I'm like oh okay sure <laughs> and I'll, and I'm checking and then you're like wait nobody like it's so rare to be able to get a DD game just because oh, usually yeah. Kakatsu picks it. Yeah, I was like, I did ask our broadcast managers, like, doesn't Bonko like exclusively stream for uh, mm -hmm. Destiny Draw? And I'm like, and they were like, no. Is there because... is there sponsored streamer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, what's up with that? Yeah, we handpick uh, streamers always uh, during the playoffs, so who are like active and stuff. So. Yeah, actually, this is this is my first time streaming like 
like this is top four, but it's the first time I'm streaming any game within the top eight, just because um, I tried to in the past, but because I'm not like a consistent streamer, they usually don't yeah. give me very high priority to cast the game uh, in top cut. I mean, like they'll be like, a, which is a I, shame. it's completely fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's fair. I think it's fair. It's just unfortunate because yeah, yeah, I would like to cast some of these games. Oh yeah, for sure. Like uh, especially with uh, somebody like you, like uh, uh, you're definitely one person I know that like like that has a lot of insights and like doesn't just like commentate on the obvious stuff, but also like tries to get into the mind of the players themselves. Like you're like really positioning yourself in the player's seat. Yeah. So which is yeah. uh, which also so which also gives a great insight to or for the viewers. So uh, which is uh, like appreciated a lot because not not many not that many people can do that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say that I noticed that. So it's pretty unfortunate for Soon Soon that he had the Edel in his hand because Edel is actually a really good way to play around um, navigation in this matchup. Uh, let me a lot see of times, what does Edel do again? Like I said, I'm not well, I mean, that familiar. Obviously, <laughs> everybody knows it has the effect where you can um, tribute it to summon like Minerva from the graveyard. But yeah. the second effect is uh, you can discard any spell to summon a Witchcrafter straight from your hand. So normally, oh. this is kind of not that relevant. But the difference is that in Witchcrafter, this is the only one that can special summon another Witchcrafter outside of the main phase. Oh, so you yeah. Can, and it's yeah. also. It's also bigger than any monster that they can just normal summon, right? Like, it's bigger than Rod, it's bigger than Kaiku. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the only way for them to get rid of it is with navigation. And then if yeah. they use the navigation, then you can chain to summon a different Witchcrafter that can then become Veer, and then they can't run it over. Yeah, but it's, it's... He drew it, so he couldn't do that play. So he's just going to get a 2k. Oh. That's really unfortunate. I could have argued that maybe if he had um, Show of Nightmares, he would have been able to get back a relevant spell, right? Because he, uh... milled, he milled Charge, Storm, Collaboration, and Holiday, right? And so yeah. two out of, like, if you get back, like, if you get back Storm or Holiday, that's really good. If you get back Charge, that's pretty good. Like, it depends on what you mill mm -hmm. after that. And then Collaboration would do nothing, but like, it's just something to think about. Oh yeah, that's definitely More some great insight. You can never, you can never say that. Okay, I would one hundred percent win this game with Show of Nightmares because the skill with a lot of RNG. Yeah. But if you sure. look at what options he had, it was like 50-50 that he would definitely be able to play out of it, and then like another twenty-five percent that he could have gotten like lucky again with the charge. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, all right. So just like that, Tsum Tsum uh, loses both his decks going two and two. Uh, let me just. Uh, Which character is doing pretty bad today? Yeah, I've noticed as well. I think so far they didn't win a single game. Actually, they're they're yeah they're zero and two right now. But I think I don't know. Like Which character is one of those decks where like you have to play it perfect. Well, you don't have to, but like you usually like you need to play like there's a really high ceiling for the deck, so it's yeah. really hard to play perfectly. And it's a lot easier for like us to look at. The game and then like look at how they lose and then afterwards be like oh, okay for them oh, to win yeah, they should have sure. done sure. this whereas like when they're actually playing and not all the information is known yeah and yeah, like they yeah. might be thinking about a different read so it might be different yeah yeah but uh, i feel like that's also uh, def uh, uh, a common thing that people like tend to say like oh but why didn't he use this or go for this play when you're basically just back yeah it's, to like, and it's and like games, it's games so, are a lot easier yeah. to think about like after they've lost right yeah 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 it's always in hindsight and of you, course yeah all right so um i want to just go back to uh, um, the infographics uh and so far tetsuya is doing really good um and he, uh, no surprise, he is one of the key players for X-Factors. And he... Uh, and as you can see, it is Dark Magician that he is doing really well with. And Yeah, definitely well worth the repeat that he used. Exactly, exactly. And I want to show the viewers as well the latest uh, match report of X-Factors vs Switch World, which was an insane game last week, uh, I think. Uh, uh, King wow, this Halo. was so close. Yeah, that was super close. Like, um, 
uh, in the end, it was King Halo that was they like... They came back. Yeah, yeah they, they came back for the win. He was like, uh, like clutching it almost for them. Oh wow, five, he went 5-1 and one with Witchcraft. Jeez. Yeah, it was insane. And uh, no surprise either, Tessia, the one that was uh, eventually uh, closing it out for uh, X-Factors. And Smart yeah. Anime Girl was the one that was defeating King Halo, which... And she's also oh she <coughs> he <laughs> it's okay I got I, yeah. it's okay I fell for that one too. yeah <laughs> um, he uh, is also on the lineup uh, as well so definitely interesting to see uh, what uh, he can bring and it is gonna be Yoshifumi back on the table for Destiny Draw mm -hmm. Yoshifumi is an interesting guy he always plays like these off the wall picks. But then, I feel like now that I said that, you're just going to come in with, like, black ones. Oh, you're, you're jinxing, man. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, let me see. Uh... Oh, no, it looks like it's Heroes. Yeah, I'm not, like, I, I feel like Heroes are a very team war deck and not so much a tournament deck because they have a very specific niche. And yeah, they're yeah. Really, they're, like, really good versus Dark Magician. And then... Outside of that matchup, they're usually just outclassed by like Black Wings or even like Tribunity. Yeah, th yeah, that's the thing. Like they're they're really very limited in their matchups. So, like they have one insane good matchup, and the rest is super like uh, like luster, So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like before, it's like they had Trunade. Like they they could abuse Trunade. After, I always felt like after they lost it. It's not like it's just like they didn't do anything special. No, no. In that sense, I can I, I can agree for sure. So um, looks like that. Um, uh, that's just starting with the circle, adding the dark magician to the hand, and setting two back row, which is a, a pretty good start. But it all depends on how strong Yoshi uh, is gonna is gonna open, how explosive his turn is gonna be. Yeah, that's part of why I'm not like a huge fan of these type of decks because yeah. it's kind of just like you explode in one turn, or like if you and if you don't open amazing on that on like turn two or turn one, then you usually just lose. <laughs> Yoshifumi gives me snake eyes, yeah, because he left my team in season three. <laughs> he was on your team? Yeah, he was. That was back when uh, back when uh, Miguel also uh, was. Uh... In season three. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he, had, yeah. he had the connection. He still had um. My team still had Tai Chi back then too. Oh yeah. They all left. We all left after. Damn. It feels bad, man. I mean, I kind of get it. Like, it's not like yeah. I mean, like they made D draw. It's not like they made nothing no. out of it. <laughs> exactly. It's not like they were, not like, they uh, they they were going for lower standards. Like, uh... Yeah. Uh, I didn't get the reference. Uh... Damn. Sorry, Zerix. Sorry for being an, an, an airhead. Alright, so... What? Oh, I know, that's uh... I was gonna say Prismatic Shadows, but you can um... You can get that with the... Yeah. With like the jewels, right? Yeah. It I'll... just means that Yoshifumi really likes heroes. I also have uh, almost Prismatic, I just need one mess change. I have a teammate who has uh... Three Prismatic Brave Neos. And oh, Prismatic geez. Neos Fusion. Prismatic Miracle Fusion. Uh, and like almost all the heroes, like the uh, attribute fusion heroes, prismatic. Oh my like God. they're missing like they're missing like maybe two of them. Damn. Like uh, who is it? Can I guess? <laughs> uh, I mean, my team doesn't have that. Uh, yeah, you can take a guess. Um, I think it's probably shiny, because I know yeah. she's a uh, will. <laughs> she loves uh, she loves Neos. Yeah. <clears throat> like she doesn't even play the deck, and then. She'll like randomly open bo uh, open str uh, structured decks to try to get prismatic brave neos. Yeah, it's a skill called infinite wallet. Infinite wallet. Like uh, <clears throat> with the payment of losing your soul. Mm. Alright, so he changes <clears throat> the increase, making sure that he doesn't get the the Vian special summon. <clears throat> yeah. Discards, he, d he does discard a Dark Magician, this makes me tell yeah, that he does have an illusion. He has. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm feeling it too. It's like Magician of Dark Illusion or a second Dark Magician in hand, right? Yeah. Oh, 
Alright, so there is no response from uh, Tetsuya. Really? Okay, so he does have a prob maybe a second uh, Dark Magician then. Or that could not, or that's not a navigation. Like, it's a lot of things, like, I need to check, basically. Or it could just be dead. Yeah. So he takes the... Let's be real here. They're Japanese. It's never dead. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Alright, so... A cyclone after... So... Meaning that he did feel the delay. Wait. Okay. And he top decks into a uh, not a circle, yeah, so I think well, that's that, why. That circle is uh, that stacked on top of the deck. Yeah, I was about to say that's why he didn't use navigation because he really wanted that circle. Mhm. Mm and he probably he saw the CC delay from the very beginning, so he already knew the last card wasn't mass change. Exactly. And just like that, he just takes it. Mm -hmm. So like Ragaki break really clutch there over the um, Karma Cut. Oh yeah, for sure. I think especially in this matchup, uh, Ragaki is uh, better. Oh for sure, yeah. Just because you can, you can do exactly what he did. Yeah. Alright, so this is gonna be uh, five to three actually. It's starting to. Uh, they're starting to get a yeah. little bit of a lead, so. <clears throat> it's, it's, yes, it is, you uh, can't even say like the Dark Magician player is drawing insane, because he's definitely had the games where he didn't open the combo. Yeah. And it's yeah. like the games, now that they're using the counter, then he's getting the combo. Plus, like, now he's getting the really good hands. Which is really sucks for Deidre, right? Like you would, you oh, definitely yeah. rather have them draw nuts when you're already supposed to lose, and then have them break when you're supposed to win. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And it's also yeah, like you said, not just because he draws well, but also but that he played well. Uh, yeah, like uh, for example, yeah. that like he, he waiting was able for the to, navigate. He was able to pull out the games that he didn't open the combo. Exactly. <clears throat> Such as like the game where him and Soon Soon just both set three cards. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And also like the play that he waited for the navigation in the end phase, like uh, yeah, just waiting for the circle around the top deck. Exactly, exactly. Being very cognizant, yeah. Alright, so um, it, it is going to be a repeat, obviously. Yeah, I mean, they, they're like five lives in. They haven't used a single one, there's no reason not to. Yeah, three to one, and just like those uh, infographics, so it showed you Shadow to Zerx and the Data Team. Tetsi has one of the key players of uh, X Factors, and and right now he's just proving it to all of us why he is the key yeah. player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a this is this is a nice play. So what he now can do is basically uh, whenever the increase is hits the field, he can. No targeted with the no, circle. No, I don't think that. I don't think that's how it works. Uh, I think so. Play, I think so. This means that he would be able to banish the Ferris. Oh wait, no, never mind. He, he he did it. Yeah. Yeah, never mind, never mind. No, I was talking. To that's why I'm like, it's, yeah, it's kind of interesting. But I guess if the point is to summon the Kaiku so that he can't malicious, then he might as well do it now so that he can't chain the increase to the Ferris. I would assume that means that his last backer was also really good, like yeah. a Sogeki break or something. Let's see. Maybe right now he's contemplating whether to use Raigeki break or not, but then again, why would you... No, he, he, already, he already... I think the opponent's thinking about whether or not to mass change. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because actually, oh, like, yeah, Tetsuya put him in a really tough spot. Because if he uses Mash Ranger and that is Regeki Breaker Karma Cut, he also can't get over the. Um, he also can't get over the Kaiku, like so he mm. can't banish to uh, search Poly. 
he might actually be doing this play because he already sees the Mali in the grave. So then if he summon if he chooses to banish the Paris now, then his opponent can't do like the Stratos combo, no. right? Well but he did Yeah, but then again. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, you're right. So he is going for the mass change. Ooh, normal summons a celestial, so he, he will be able to pop uh, the circle if he wants to. <laughs> Maybe he has a second mass change? Ooh, that would be nutty. Okay, so. I'm gonna use increase. He's definitely going pretty aggressive. So. So right now is the time to whether to use the karma cost or the like key break. I, th I think you would definitely hold it at this point because like he you already have the kaiku to stop him from making a fusion. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting about a Kaiku. You're right. Okay, so, so it's cosmic. Uh, okay, it's a uh, cyclone. Okay. Yeah, that's not that's not good for uh, no. Because if he has yeah. a mass change already in hand. This is not looking good. Oh no, he he def I don't think he does. If he did, he he wouldn't have um he would have just gone for game. Okay, yeah, you're right. Nice call. Um Yeah, now he needs a good top deck. Wait, is the Sal on this team the same as Sa like the normal Sal that we know? No, no, this is different. No, I was gonna. I thought, <laughs> I thought Sal was on. I thought Sal was on FM. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is. Um, no, this Sal is a is a different one. All right, so uh, X into a circle, no. I believe. <clears throat> I didn't check. Yeah. Oh, he missed. Oh. Yeah, this, I feel I like mean, this is it. Katsuya did a lot of work. Yeah, for Three sure. Three and two. Oh, yeah. Worth the repeat. He definitely proved why he was, uh, why, he, why he's a key player for X Factors. Mm -hmm. And just like that, Yoshifumi takes out uh, Tetsuya going 3 to 2, which is amazing in this, uh, in this stage. Alright, so mm -hmm. what would you bring against the deck uh, like uh, like heroes, uh, especially since Crestrons are like slowly phasing out? I feel like. Uh, I think honestly, you could do like Sabers, you could do um, Shira even, just like those type of control decks. I think yeah. have a really good matchup. I think Witchcraft is all right. It just depends on whether or not you can deal with Plasma. Yeah. It was yeah. <laughs> like there's definitely things you can do. Um. Hmm. You're just running through the tier list. I think, generally speaking, Black Wings win more of the games. Just because, like, if you go with Black Wings, you can... Like, if you go first with Black Wings, you can set up a board that they can't kill you through. But then if you're playing Heroes and you go first, Black Wings can pretty much always kill you. Oh, yeah. I saw so, I saw an interesting list, actually, from, uh, from the KC uh, Grand Tournament. Uh, and it is actually from Haru, who is currently in a lineup, and it is uh, the Blackwing list, which I, I really liked. Uh, I think it played... Oh, with uh, level reduction? Yeah, and with the triple lens. Uh, I think I think that's really nice. <laughs> like It's, it's funny, because like, uh, Gift was showing me the deck, and Gift and Grushis, and they're like, they're like, and, uh, you think this deck is good? I'm like, dude, I, I saw the level reduction, and I saw the Harmattan. I'm like, you want me to do subtraction and addition? <laughs> I'm not learning this deck. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I already learned crystals. That's too much. I already learned yeah, crystals. That, that's too much, dude. I can't. <laughs> I can't do both. 
<laughs> so then I ended up not learning that deck, and then the rest of my, like, other people on my team learned it. It seems pretty good. One of the things about a deck is that it just makes Phoenix Chain really bad. Oh, like, yeah. Like, if you have Phoenix yeah. Chain versus that deck, it's like, it does nothing. No, I ended up cutting that. Phoenix Chain from a lot of my decks just because, like, if this deck becomes more popular, like, Phoenix Chain is just going to be terrible. Oh, yeah, because basically you just, like, uh, what's it called? Like, uh, they chain you, you uh, you're like you do uh, your level reduction and uh, make a Joe. Yeah. Make a Joe. It's really cool. Uh, we summon it back and uh, pop again. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I just think, like, peak performance is just not that good. No, I like, feel like um, peak performance was more of a tool to get out uh, the River Valley. I was running, I was, I was running math on it. I'm not, I'm not much of a math guy, but like I can go like online and use a calculator. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I was looking it up. Like if you play, um, like if you play like three charge Alila and two Econs, which is kind of standard now in yeah. Witchcrafter, your chance to out Eternal one Necro Valley is like over seventy percent, oh, and wow. not by much. It's like seven. It's like seventy point like five or something. But Damn, that's it's like a, if you, that's if you're playing if you're playing black wings and your strategy going first against witchcrafter is just necro valley pass mm -hmm. that's like really bad right like that that's you lose seventy percent of the time yeah or at least you yeah. lose the necro valley seven yeah so it just didn't seem very good so having a skill like level reduction that lets that makes your going second a lot stronger just seems better oh but also the thing about big performance is it's more like of a tool to get out uh necro valley as uh, consistently as possible and with the uh, with the uh, uh with crystal slowly phasing out um yeah it's like yeah. necro valley is not even good against a lot of, like the, the best deck the deck it's best against is witchcrafter yeah and like i said it's like the chance they outed is so high oh yeah yeah and bad aim is also really popular in a deck like Shira, so they have they have a ton of outs too. Like they have Ballista, Bad Aim. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't even need it if they can just like control your monsters, and then they can just beat you down with like squires and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so yeah, uh, right now we're just waiting for uh, the next player of uh, of uh, X Factors, and right now we still have. Uh, Another graphic I want to show you guys is uh, is uh, these players uh, you're seeing right now are uh, players that have uh, past achievements in the season or in other like affiliated tournaments and you can see that most of these guys are actually playing right now for the exception of uh, of uh, Bobby and I can see and Pokeri. Yeah, Pokeri is not playing. So, um, looks like their answer is uh, they started their game. It looks okay. like the answer is switch Runias. All right, we'll get right back into and it's gonna be so. Just remove Tetsuya. Slice of back. I mean, I saw All Stars, <laughs> Zarek, so I was uh, under the impression that it also meant other <laughs> tournaments. Pepe, wait. Nobody cares about other tournaments. Yeah. <laughs> it's Team Wars. It's just only Team Wars. So you're going first with heroes in a matchup like this is really bad because one of the one of the problems is that you're gonna like obviously the opponent's going second so they have five cards and this is not a matchup where you don't have to do anything because like one keeper is game, right? Yeah, yeah, basically. Alright, so right now he's uh he's uh, doing the typical wall of uh China play. Looks like he already has the poly too. Yeah, he did. There's like no the reason. Client. There's like no reason not to search it. All right, so it's gonna be cycle on cycle in action. Gonna go for the switcheroo. And he normal. Oh my god. Uh, Alice does he have the? Does he have the? 
the shell. If if he does have the shell, like this is over. Yeah. Right. Cosmic Alistair shell one time. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my yeah. god. This <clears throat> man was like hold my purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Alistair was the guard you switched your route into? No way, I didn't check by the way, but if that's the case, then like, this man is I think it might have been. I, I wasn't like super paying attention, but I kind of remember it as, yeah. But like I was saying, like, if you like, especially since he's going first in this matchup, I feel like it's already really hard. Because he has to, um, he has to combat five cards, and because he has to prevent himself from dying, yeah. he has to, uh, yeah. And so takes it for X Factors. Ironically, if he um, if he just like passed this turn one, he might have lived, right? If the opponent doesn't have keeper. No, no. Because then he would just um, make the fire fusion and attack you directly, and then that's not game. Kick W. Kick <laughs> Um. So Yoshi Fumi is out. Uh. And is that was that both of his decks? I thought that uh, was just his first deck. No, it was both of his deck because he it got repeated. Sacked. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Sneedra can't catch a break. No, this is not uh, right now. When you're like past uh, six uh, points, uh, Mark, it's getting really hard to. Like, yeah, because uh, well, you don't really have. <clears throat> generally really speaking, options. after you use the first um, three players, the last two, like, you don't have a lot of options. Yeah. Exactly. Like, it's very rare for you to, like, perfectly plan out a war to the point where, like, every single deck is still good and you still have all your options. Unless, like, the other team has, like, maybe, like, two wins. Yeah, but that's also the thing right now when a meta becomes still, is that you don't re really can get an edge over your opponent, because almost everything is figured out. So, when you, like, yeah. you have two good players, for example, face each other, and they know exactly what they're doing, both with both for the decks, it basically com comes down to like who's even drawing better or <clears throat> top deck. Or... Yeah, I mean, like that's one of the things about really long formats that, like, um, I think one of the strengths of like, I guess like known like good players is that they can like learn, they can like figure stuff out really quickly, they can adapt. Yeah. But yeah. once the format's been going on for so long, it's so easy for even like someone who doesn't really, who's not like amazing at the game, to have already learned these things from watching other people. Exactly. So then it's like the games. The games are no longer so much about like okay, like me outplaying you because they've been rehearsed so many times yeah. that it can become very like drawn. I have noticed yeah. though that like if like like the the really best players like this like I was inspired, but like the really best players are able to like find the moments to like win. Like I remember last mm -hmm. season, uh, Haru had a game where. He was playing Black Wings versus Element Saber, and he decked out the Black Wing player. He decked oh out the Element God. Saber player with Black Wings. So it's and like just like the way he played it was like it's just like watching that type of stuff. It's it's really cool because like you won't see that in a lot of games. No, exactly. And it it is it is exactly what you said about um, players uh, having the ability to to adapt. Like uh, it, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't uh, goes only for the players. Spent. What element saber here? Yeah. So I've yeah. I've been told that I was told that element saber is really good into this deck, but when I've watched people play it, it seems like it's like all right, like it's yeah, not like amazing. Yeah, I mean, I can I can see why they're they're, they're thinking like that because like basically you can use your opponent's uh, uh, shells, uh, but uh, yeah, like it's like like when I when I've played it or when I've watched people play it, it seems like it doesn't seem that auto win. Like it no. seems it depends on the right pretty... back row. It depends on the right back row, and like I think uh, this deck also plays things like uh, Divine Red. So if they hit you with the down mm -hmm. Divine Red uh, early on in the game, and they already set <clears> up <throat> like a Neo, or he plays he plays the Cosmic and Lance. It's crazy. All right, so he normal summons the Keeper, getting out uh, the Neos. Basically, foolish burial here. Mm -hmm. Alright, so he sends the he sends the shell, and also it prevents him from not uh, 
special summoning any monster, so it, uh, Haru doesn't need to be afraid of a uh, Purgatory or anything like that. Yeah, could you imagine? Oh like my if... god. <laughs> no, you send please. Michelle and then you flip up the Alistair and then you make Perg jeans. Oh, oh my god, like I would be playing that uh, the deck all the time. Like I'm not gonna even bother to learn Wishcraft this cause <laughs> Hmm. hmm, so he didn't attack. I don't attack. know if I... He didn't attack with yeah. Eos. I don't know if I like that fight. Oh. oh okay, never mind. Yeah, like never mind. Now it makes sense. Yeah. Now I don't like this play at all. No. <laughs> never <laughs> mind. <laughs> in never hindsight. Mind. <laughs> yeah, ne never mind. This play is terrible. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he opened like Cosmic Lance Lance, so. Yeah. I mean, the intention. I'm trying to think right, if he. Yeah. I'm trying to think if he even had an out to this. Yeah, I don't think he did. No. Well, and he still has a uh, model who summon. I think the um, the cosmic depth had to hit the econ. So yeah, and it didn't. Just like that, Haru takes it with the bigger trio. <laughs> Making it uh, 5 to 6. I wonder if they expected the counter to Neos to be um, Element Saber. I feel like with with the Neos deck, uh, I, don't, I, I, I will be the type of guy that doesn't really plan for it, to counter it, yeah. to be honest. Cause... I, I, I actually think Neos is really strong, but I think because it's a, the kind of deck that doesn't really like, Neos is a weird deck because it doesn't yeah. really operate on, like, one type of um, archetype, right? Like, yeah. No, like, most of these decks are, like, you know, like, Black Wings, but, like, they're, like, they're very obviously one, like, archetype. You, like, you go on you go on Deck Builder, you type in, like, Blue Eyes, and then you put all the Ultra Rare Blue Eyes cards into your deck, and then that's your deck, right? Like. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but Neos isn't really like that, so, like, you can see, like, he was playing Cosmic, he was playing Lance. Like, they play all these, like... Like Alistair and Keeper and Neos, like one of cards, or like a one one card play type of cards. Yeah. And then yeah. everything else is just like back row. So then, yeah. depending on what they play for those other slots, your matchup could be really bad. Yeah, I I, I think I, I can totally agree with it, and that's why I think it's so hard for uh, to prepare for such a deck because like mm -hmm. yeah, like on paper yeah, like, you, you could have like second deck. It looks yeah. like it looks like it's Black Wings, and like see, it's just like. They didn't expect Sabres to be the counter, I guess. Uh-huh. And so it looks like if if Haru wins this, then they tie it back up. Yeah. Haru has been like the like the shining star of Destiny Draw for a while now. Oh, even yeah, if he's not sure. like the highest like even if he's not like the best scoring player, he's like consistently Whenever, whenever they're like not doing well, Haru's always like the one to bring it back. I remember oh, last yeah, season playoffs, sure. he did it like multiple times. Oh yeah, for sure. Like Haru isn't the type of guy. Yeah, like I feel like there are certain players that like we all know that are super good, but they don't uh, seem Silent to perform. But also, huh? Silent but deadly. <laughs> Silent but deadly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, and I think in this case, Haru is one of those guys. Like you know that he is a yeah. monster, but doesn't mean that. He doesn't always streak, but like, yeah, he has his moments. Like he can Ooh, turn that divine wrath was disgusting. Oh yeah, for sure. Like going minus two, basically. And you already know he doesn't have the whirlwind because he would obviously activate it, or he did the seaman. <laughs> yep. So he needs to have a gill. I mean, he could just like you could you could think like how strong is um Haru's hand even right? Oh yeah. Like maybe he already has invocation. But mm. yeah. Uh, it looks like his hand's pretty weak too. Like maybe like Lance and Close or something. I feel like people are starting to phasing out of Close. Well, I mean maybe not this yeah, well, This is uh, this is peak performance yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. Like peak performance still plays it because you have to when you do the pixie combo to draw, like the only reason why that play is good is because you can draw close. Yeah. So exactly. if you don't play close, then like it's just not a good play. Very true. All right. So right now, uh, Haru is uh, thinking about his turn. 
So like you said, you could probably already have an invocation in hand. Is that the monster that he had in hand already? Well, I mean, even even if he has an invocation, he, he's only making a Kaliga. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have it. It makes me wonder what the card in hand would be that he would discard Alistair over that card, right? I'm, I'm like it must yeah. be a, it must be really good. Hmm. Cause he just set the monster that he already had in his hand, right? No, he set the new card. Oh, did he set the new card? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, I was thinking this was the other possibility that. Ah. Uh... This is the. The other possibility that he had, um, like another discard, but even if he has another discard, like you would definitely discard the Nagi first, right? Mm, I like, don't am, think, I, uh, am I missing something? Uh, maybe he's he's worried about Necrovalley, but if you yeah, have Valley, then you would, you would still want the Alistair. I don't know. I don't think it would need that matters that much. I'm not sure. All right, so for Burden Chalice, mm. I'm gonna negate it. Chalice. Okay. I definitely didn't see that one coming. Wow. I guess that's like a tech for a um, witchcrafter. He, I thought he was gonna activate your vacation. <laughs> that would be disgusting, Andy. Mm -hmm. Hi. Right, so, um, folks, info for for, for uh, fourteen hundred. Yeah. And right now, uh, so I was starting to. Oh, never mind. So he's checking Same for delay. Alright, so he did yeah. have the Bora in hand, but the Canadia Ooh. prevents it. He's, he has to draw a monster though, because the um, the mountain is keeping the Bora. Like he has, I mean, he has. He can draw Palace, he can draw monster, he can draw Invocation, but he has to draw something. Like he, he definitely doesn't want to draw a trap. No. I mean, we see he, that he plays Karma and um, Divine Wrath too, so he, he can. If he draws any of those, then that's just completely dead. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you're gonna draw a trap, then Canadia or Floodgate. And enemy controller is not ideal here either. No, because you basically lose a body. Yeah. <clears throat> I love watching games like these though, just because oh. like, even like, even if I apply like things I know, I would still be like, I don't know who's gonna win this game, right? No, exactly. They're always super exciting. It's, it's, all, it's all basically on the top decks, and like there's so much. There's, there's limited information on the board, which makes it kind of. Like, yeah. Uh, These games are not that fun to play, but they're really fun to watch. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, like now, now it's like okay, does the opponent draw any monster, any like level four? And it's like game, right? Like yeah. And then if he draws Seamoon, he just loses. Oh, oh my god! He actually drew a level 4. Yeah. Yeah, that's game. Looks like Haru will not be tying it up. <laughs> yeah, this uh, two difference lead is really gonna hurt uh, Destiny draw in the long run. Uh, I imagine they would repeat this life, right? No, uh, uh, it can because Haru already won with this deck. In the, oh, you're uh, right, he did. You're so, right. Uh, oh wow. So it's on, it's on Haru's second deck. Yeah, exactly. What if his second deck is also Black Wings? I feel like that's not the craziest oh, thing. Oh, I'm gonna face off. Come on. Uh, let me see, so that is 7 to 5 Alright, so wait, so right now we're waiting for the second deck of uh, Haru. Um, I think I think I showcased every uh, every graphic I wanted to show. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Didn't expect the war to be this long. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's All interesting right. to, to note that like um like uh, you, both of the teams might not use all of the repeats, but that's kind of a good thing, right? Because like repeats were made to prevent like or like not to prevent, but to accommodate for like potentially getting sacked out of um mm -hmm. a opening mat like a counter matchup, and then usually in, in wars that are these uh, this close, you won't have an opportunity to use all your repeats because it's like. Yeah. Like you usually win with a deck before you lose with it, so then... Exactly. That's, yeah. No, you, you're definitely right. Trudger level reduction? Sorry? If he does... If Trudger gets level reduction, it's probably a mirror match. Oh my god. I don't, I, I'm not sure if uh, <clears throat> Trudge has uh, level reduction. Yeah, I'm, I can't look at it either. At the same time though, like, I'm not sure how good level reduction would be if... He has clothes, right? Like, it just doesn't seem as good. Hmm. I'll be right back. Give me a minute. Yeah. Prismatic rolling, jeez. <clears throat> oh, he banished a Roshi for Simon. That's like pretty weird and bad. That, I mean, that means that like his hand is probably like. Alice or close, I guess. So it might not be terrible. Like, yeah, exactly. I don't know if I would set Whirlwind though, because I think we kind of know that Haru plays um, Lance over Cosmic. Yeah, three sets, but earlier we saw that this guy plays um, Chalice and probably close, so... And like, we know that one's just Whirlwind. Palace is like really bad against level reduction though I would imagine. It's just like a worse Phoenix chain and Phoenix chain already sucks. Now Irving, uh, the other player Sal, we saw that he was playing Chalice, so if he lances he can chain Chalice and that's just kind of super neg.
Looks like I uh, came just in time. <laughs> Welcome uh, back. Sorry uh, for the moments of disappearance. <clears throat> oh wait, did I mute you? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I I don't know. I thought I don't know. I thought you did. I was talking for a bit, and then I was like. I, maybe maybe I muted, so I'll just stop talking. Oh no! Like I I didn't <laughs> mute you, so <laughs> <laughs> I was like too <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> nah, there was some right. uh, family coming over, and I they persistently. You hate family. I, yeah, I, I hate know what you mean, man. Yeah. I hate family. <laughs> family is terrible. Oh my god. <laughs> like um, they really wanted me to greet this uncle like that I barely see so I'm like yeah sure sure mm. yeah what's up yeah yeah I'm good how about you <laughs> yeah 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 and then uh, I was like I need to go <laughs> smug all right so it's gonna be smug so that's pretty unfortunate because uh, they both open like pretty decent but oh it's yeah classic yeah case of black wing player going first versus black wing player going second and then if um if the other black wing player drew um if uh, the other black wing player drew a level four, he could potentially have came back right there too. So it's crazy. Let me see. So Haru is oh, the sound, the sound second deck is Element Saber. Wow. And he has Palace. Damn, he's going in. I have learned some things about this from watching like other people that actually play Black Wings play this matchup. So like, even if you open like no tech cards, there's like some things you can kind of do to not lose as hard to. What's that card? Malehu. I think he opened. Haru opened terrible too. Yeah. <clears throat> but like, for example, to, uh, you can potentially use like um. Like, no, you know, normally, like, you would go, like, Sea Moon into level 4 into, like, Gale or level 3, and then they would just flip down your level 3 and then your turn's over, right? Yeah. But then you can do, like, Sea Moon, and then you can search Gale, and then you can summon the Gale, and then you can just, like, half the sea, the half the Malehu and attack. And if they try to flip down the Gale, then you can special Oroshi and then uh, make a Synchro and then flip your Gale back up. So it's kind of cool. Oh, that's actually very really nice. Yeah, right? Like, I, I, I never thought about it, but I saw someone else do it, and I was like, yeah, that's a really cool play. I like that a lot. I mean, I, I don't play that much Black Wings, but that play never occurred to me, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not much of a Black... Oh, wow, Pointer. Oh, wow. Oh, we don't get to see the hand. Oh, we don't? Oh, wait, wait, we do. Oh, no, we do get... There's two lances! Oh, my God! Alright, so we know that he has a level 4. So there's nothing actually really yeah. good to discard. <laughs> yeah, there's there's nothing. Well, no, you would hit you hit the level four. The yeah, yeah. Is you hit the level four and then you flip down the Chris. Wow. But then, yeah. That's and then, actually. But you insane. need the other two back row to be live or else you're dead. Oh my god. So like you like you said, he did go for the level four. Yeah. Hit the level four and then you flip down the Chris, and then you need both the back rows to be live. Do you? Hmm. Might not be dead, right? No. Because then you're at. No, you're not dead, so you're fine. Yeah, you just need one of the back rows to be live, so that you can force them to lance and then you don't die. Alright, so normal summons. Wait, the... Yeah. Scale. The last card in hand is Invocation, too. Alright, so he's gonna flip that up, most likely. Or maybe you just let him... <clears throat> Synchro, right? Like, would that be that bad? Mm. Oh no, this is good. 
By flipping it down now, he can't special the other Gale. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, it's smart playing. This is really bad because he, you already know he has the invocation. So he, even if he Destiny draws Alistair, you can't Lance it. And you can just set Alistair and then invocation. It's pretty oof. This is definitely oof. Nice. Sets both Lances. Just like oh. getting the knowledge off how to pointer was so huge. But like on top of that, afterwards you're able to destiny draw for anything you want. I mean, but you still have to deal with the with the lance though. But no, it doesn't matter because he has a Molly. No, it doesn't matter. Oh no, he has invocation in hand already. No, we saw no, that off his appointment. No, what I meant was that uh, when you normal summon Alistair, he doesn't need to be afraid oh, no, of but... lance. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Oh wait, did he have double lance? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, he has, he has two lance. Oh, then but maybe Mono. Once, yeah. once his flip face down, it's going to be unaffected by lance again. Exactly. But the point is that he can use Malehu to flip himself face down now. Yeah. I mean, and then can, what he also can do... Back up to, yeah. yeah. I mean, what he also can do is just set the Alistair and then... Yeah, that's what I was going more for. Like, you set the Alistair, you make perk, and then you Malehu flip yourself face down so it's a... Oh, okay. It's at 1900 again. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Stop coaching. Wait, he's summoning. He's summoning it. <gasps> what? Actually, that I don't think it matters. Like, I don't think it matters at all. Well, like right now, you he lances. Okay. You flip down. Well, I think it does matter because. Wait. So. You activate the invocation, he lances, you Malu. No, because like, once you flip it face down, it's not affected by the lance anymore, even if it resolved or because it's, it's a it's face down, so it's a different monster. But he has two lances, right? Or am I missing something? Yeah, no, I'm saying like so he goes lance, and then you chain to flip down, and you chain another lance. So the lance resolves, but then once you go face oh, down... Oh, yeah, should... yeah, 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 okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that perk is huge. Oh my god. We know that the other well, back row is a lance, so... Yeah, if you lance it, so then it becomes 25, and then loses the palace boost. So it becomes 25, 23, 15? No, not 15. 25, 23, and then 19. Oh, but he has another invocation. Jeez. Yeah, this is over. Yeah, it doesn't seem like Destiny Draw is able to tie it up because every time they're getting close, then the counter pick just destroys them. Yeah. I think they only had one time when Tetsuya lost with the counter pick, but then he he managed to repeat Ant's uh, streak with the. Oh yeah, I think the, there was the deck. yeah. There was the mode when it was uh, a three-three. But it hasn't been close since. No. Like, ever since Tetsuya won that game, like, it always been a two difference lead. Alright, so Smug, on, Smug Enemy Girl takes it for X Factors, making it 8 to 6. Update Smug's score. What also is interesting that everybody on uh, X Factor so far is uh, at, at least uh, has at least two wins. Yeah. So both all of these players are doing an insane job. Yeah, actually, everybody pulling their weight. Exactly. So it all comes down to Firu. Uh, I haven't seen Firo that much actually uh, this season. Or... Uh, Firo, 
I mean, so uh, Firu is definitely one of like the like historically one of the really strong Japanese players, but I haven't seen him much lately. No, same. Uh, uh, if we're gonna go... that he's not good, it's just I don't. I just haven't. I don't even know what he plays right now. Exactly. I want to go back into the infographics to see um, what his score is at the moment. Uh, let me see. So right now, Firu is. Uh, he only played one game this season. Two and two. And he went two and two. Yeah. So to play your second game this season in the semifinals is kind of monkass <laughs> to me. <laughs> so we're gonna yeah, see. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, Firu is like. He's not a bad player. No, no, for uh, definitely, yeah. not, definitely. Like uh, I know he has like uh, one or two gold icons. Like who does it on Destiny Four? But... <laughs> isn't that the pre? Isn't that like a prerequisite to join? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, otherwise, you wouldn't be on the team. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm also quite interested to see uh, what kind of decks he's uh, playing and. I also want to see how much uh, Smug has uh, played this season as well, so we can check that as Last well. Last time I saw Firu play, he was playing Dark Lords, if I remember correctly, so it's it's been a while. Wow. Alright, so we have Smug here, who's actually... Uh, let me see those letters. I think he was 6 and 8. Yeah, 6 and 8. I saw yeah. it earlier. So, he's doing, uh, he's doing pretty good uh, as well, so... I mean, sick. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's doing pretty good. Yeah, I mean, like, it's not. I'm not. Bad I, score. I, I, yeah, I'm just saying. Like, I'm not. I'm not trying to say he's doing terrible, but no. It's just like, yeah, it's okay. It, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, six. Yeah, six wins, guys. Yeah. <laughs> now, now he has seven wins. Right. Yeah. So if he if he two o's um, Firu, then he'll be positive. Oh perfect. yeah, yeah, it's perfect. It all makes sense. Yeah. All right, so. Wait, crow? Is this also black wings? Wait. Monka we has. Another, are we gonna see another black wings into his sabers? Did they brought three black wings? Wow. And I think it doesn't got really. Do they really do like the love production black wings. Though. Oh no, it's it's a um, oh, okay. Shira. Okay, so sure, it's, I think it's 50 50 this <clears throat> matchup. But I think it all depends on the bag. Depends if they're, it depends if they play Lancia. Yeah. Honest. Well, yeah, for sure. So it all comes down to the tags and the hand traps. <clears throat> so starting with the Kazuki sending the level 2 to the graveyard and ending with 2 back row, it's a, it's a pretty decent start. Not the most optimal, but <clears throat> you can play with it. I oh, know this is a great start. Kozuki is probably like the second best starter in the deck. Yeah, well, so, so some people tend to like to tunnel vision and uh, with Squire. Oh yeah, no, if it's not Squire, it's a bad one. Yeah, hand. exactly. <laughs> Alright, immediately goes for the Alice to summon. I'm sure. Just... Surely Fedor has something in order to stop this, or at least a purgatory here. He would have already flipped, yeah. Maybe he has Lancia? Lancia would be like, insane right here. Oh yeah. He could have waited with the <coughs> chain, because he, he, he might be scared that Smug already had a, uh, has a second uh, No, that, I thought about it, and that play is always incorrect, because if they have two... Uh, invocations, they will just make two Purgatrios, you know? Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Yeah, he has Lance. Oof. He does have the Lance, yeah. Activates the Palace of the Element Lords. It's casually activating Palace. <laughs> so he has the Nalu. Wait, what? Does he have another invocation? Does he have, like, another invocation with Alistair in hand? No way. That that would be disgusting. I mean, it wouldn't matter because he already, uh, he loses next turn to, if he needs back or else he loses next turn to, um, Shogun Saga. Yeah. Hmm. 
Mm, so some people I guess it, I guess it does matter because he can run over the Gazuki, but if that was the case, he probably should have Palace Surge first, right? Yeah. So that he could yeah. keep the second invocation. So he did have a uh, Alistair in hand yeah. and a second invocation. So definitely should have searched, because if you think about it, if he managed to search the Nalu first, mm -hmm. and then he activated Invocation, he would have the second one in hand. Which would oh, mean yeah. that he would have been able, on the following turn, he would have been able to set up his uh, Alistair engine again. But whereas now, he had to go for this just because he has to kill the Gozuki. And then he also, he cut off his entire Alistair engine. Yeah, he cannot recycle anymore. But on, on the bright side, he does have Palace, and like, Malehu is a pretty good card, so in this matchup. Oh yeah, for sure. And the fact that he can now run over the Kazuki in order uh, to prevent the level 8 next turn is uh, quite yeah. good as well. And then, as long as Fury doesn't top deck a Solitaire, he's in a pretty good spot. But one thing to note though is that Smug doesn't have any uh, back row, so if Fury does manage to yeah. top deck into a Solitaire or... I think yeah. Solitaire is the best here. No, no, uh, even Squire, like Squire as well. Then I mean, you could also fun. argue, like, if you search Nalu and he doesn't have Land Seed, you just lose a lot by not having a Battle Phase next turn. I think, like, it's like, both are pretty arguable. But I think, if he didn't have Land Seed yet, it would have been really strong if you just made um, the Cassidus first, and then you made, like, Purgatrio second, since you still have two Invocations, right? Exactly. No, I think I would agree with that play as well. Yeah. Alright, so uh, the level 2 is going to activate in the graveyard, going to summon the Archon Skull. And the top deck another back row. This is probably pretty safe. Uh, I don't know. I was going to say, like, maybe you don't search Malehu here, just because you don't have the battle phase and the opponent has three back rows, so the Malehu is probably not resolving. But I don't know if yeah. it's better to not have a battle phase next turn or to not have a battle phase the turn after next turn, right? Yeah, yeah. This game could also very realistically go to deck out at this point. Depending on like if um, Smug can get enough back row before um, before Fury gets like a, a way to deal with Cassidus. Yeah, it is hard. It is definitely hard. Okay, so he top decked Squire. It's not that great here, though. Right? Actually, no, it's, it's alright. Because you can at least run over the Cassidus. Actually, no, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I'm gonna phase it. I'm gonna phase it. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> but it's like. For him to top deck like a Spectral Sword or a Squire or a Solitaire is like, it's a pretty high chance. So you can't really say like, oh, he got lucky. No, no, for sure, for sure. Yeah. All right, so the Swords of Cassidus and doesn't go into the face on probably uh, suspects uh, it being an Alistair. How is he gonna win with zero invocation? He plays a third, duh. <clears throat> so right now it's yeah, I don't think he can win. Yeah. yeah, I don't think he can win anymore after this. No, that, that's definitely not over, like but... the um, the turn one not playing around the Lancia hurt a lot. I think. Yeah, I think so too. Got off his resources way too fast. Like obviously, like to search there it would would have been like actively playing around Lancia, but so it's like it's like the difference between like 
a regular play or like a good play and like a really like heads up like super strong type of like like forward thinking type of play you know yeah yeah exactly exactly like even now I, I can only say that that was the right play in hindsight and i don't yeah. even know if that would be the right play overall because you don't know if he plays lance yet you might so, be able to assume it because this is the counter deck but it's also the last player right i so, mean yes. i think yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I get, I get what you're saying. I think it also depends on like you have to like check yourself, uh, being like, okay, so what's the card that can hurt me the most? Like it doesn't mean yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, like and exactly. just go from there, and like if it's something else, mm -hmm. well, at least you, at least you checked out for the worst case scenario. So it's like the concept of like risk versus reward, right? Exactly. Like, how risky is it for me to play around that card versus like how risk like how bad is my situation if they have yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. So right now I think we can say that Smog took the risk of him not playing Lancia. And <laughs> Probably he didn't... wasn't worth it. Yeah. Because his hand looked like, like... He didn't have back row, but his hand had like... Was like really strong. It was in terms super of like strong. Being able to... And yeah, in like, fact... It was like Palace, double... It was like Palace Invocation, double Alistair. Yeah. Exactly, and also the fact that it uh, more uh, salt uh, in the injury. The fact that Fido didn't top deck into anything good the next turn. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if if he went for this play, he wouldn't have had a battle phase. Yeah. And he definitely didn't have game on that turn. Exactly. But I think. I think just being able to um, not instantly lose the game to like a uh, Lancia was really strong because he didn't have back row either, right? So. No. If if he has Lan like, for not playing around it, you're just saying like, okay, if he has it, I lose. Yeah, and I think th I think that's, I mean, you you can't say that the mentality is wrong, but, um, uh, but mm. then again, my bias is right now in hindsight, so yeah, like, yeah. It's like if you didn't have it, you would have we would have seen no problem with the play. So it's just like yeah. it's just something to think about, not so much to like be like, oh man, this dude is like terrible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and plus, in the end of the day, Smug still has a second deck. Yeah, for sure, and. Like, they're still up, so and we know that Smog is a good enough player to uh, potentially close it out for his team, so... Alright, so 1-1 one, one, Smog, and 1-0 oh, Firu. So, and just like that, Andy, he opens with the grass that wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Even without grass, I feel like this matchup is extremely favorable for Witchcrafter. Because, generally speaking, which, um, Shira Nui cannot get over Veer, like, with their monsters. And then the back row they play is, like, mainly Ballista. Like, they, they probably don't play Triple Karma. And... Like, you can definitely summon Veer more times than they can kill Veer, right? Oh, so. yeah, yeah. Mm. Alright, so he sends the unveiling to the graveyard. Not a normal summon the Shmeta. <clears throat> exactly, opening the one of Black Jesus would be proud. Like, when I play this matchup, I actually don't even care about summoning Veer right away to negate the uh, Squire. Because I acknowledge that, like, Squire is not that... Like, like the Shiranui engine is not good versus my deck, right? Yeah, yeah. Alright, so Yusuf shows on Lime getting back to charge of Library Grace. He can mill two cards again if he wants to. Trip is over the Schmetta. This card's charge of library gates. And uh, special summons the yeah. Madame Ver. The huge behind. Alright, and guess all of his wishcraft. He did discard back. charge. It makes me think that he already has like his Lila and his yeah. Minerva. That'd be interesting. Like he opened charge Lila Minerva, or he just 
Because like, like I said, I don't really value Veer. Because like, if you summon Veer, they will just set three back row and not summon a monster, right? Oh yeah. Like to do. So say, do these... Like for me, it's no big deal to like summon Veer right away. Yeah, I mean, I would, the... if. No, go ahead, go ahead, I go imagine ahead. like the, I imagine like the reason he would discard uh, charge is because he already has Minerva and Lila, not because like he wants to summon Veer. Yeah, so. and I, I think I can agree with that. Do like uh, some sure builds play decks in order to play around the. I mean, uh, they can play Karma Cut, but I've actually yeah. found like I just don't, I don't really like Karma Cut in Shira, because like Karma Cut in Shira is kind of like Karma Cut in Saber, where it's like okay, you can play useless cards, like you can discard useless cards, at, for like the, like like you know like Nalu or um, yeah. like Solitaire, but that doesn't mean that you did not like your karma cut is not like a minus one it just means that you had a minus one before using karma cut yeah. because the card was already useless right do you know what i'm saying yeah exactly, yeah, see, this is, this exactly. Is, like, yeah like... if you summon veer they just set three cards it's all right because smug has graveyard set up but a lot of times especially when you don't grasp obviously you're like you won't have the graveyard set up so if you just summon veer without any like follow-up play then your opponent will very easily just they can Except very easily, yeah. They can very then, easily like, deal with the very, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then like it's like it's going super all in for a play that's like not even a real thing. Exactly. Also, this is another. This is something cool that I learned about like Canadian Lila. If you wait for them to use the effect of Lila before you Canadia, so Lila in order to pop a back row with Lila, it has to switch to defense position with its own effect. So if oh. it doesn't do that, then it won't pop the back row. But because they activated the effect, if you chain Canadia to Lila's effect to pop a back row, it won't pop the back row, and they can't flip it up the following turn because it can't yeah. change the battle position. Oh, that's that's, so that's nice. kind of cool. I didn't know that changing the battle, battle position was a prerequisite in order for them to destroy. Yeah, them. I only learned it because like someone did it to me and I couldn't flip it up, and then now I just do it to other people. <laughs> so it's just one of those things, right? Like you, you learn stuff from ladder, and then you're like, oh, Damn. I guess this is my this is mine now. That. <laughs> that is, is letter something useful. Yeah. Never knew uh, I would learn something from uh, from the letter place. Yeah. All right. So uh, activate the holiday. Gets back to Schmetta. I feel like he has no reason to not just use collaboration on Shmierda, switch Veer to attack and attack with Bow. You know what I mean? Yeah, just go full aggressive. Because like, like, look, now he's not going to use back row, right? If you if you use if you like force lethal, and he will use a back row, and it's like you still have three cards in hand, like Minerva, I think Unveiling, and like two more cards probably spells. Yeah, feels pretty safe considering that he doesn't have any cards on, and he doesn't have any graveyard set up. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. When you um, if you just go Veer pass, and then they'll just set three. Like he already had the Swire. He just didn't summon it on the first turn because there's no reason to. But now he can summon it. And now and when then he tries to negate, negate he can yeah. chain. He can fiendish you. He could ballista you. Right? Like there's a lot of stuff you could do. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. And uh, this is something that Smog probably knows and doesn't negate. Because he knows that he, uh... Yeah, right, so it's like... Now you, you don't even negate, so like, defeats the purpose of Veer. That Veer could have been like... Like a Pator to like, get you more set up on the following turn. Just like, food for thought. Yeah, for sure. Looks like the Lila thing will be pretty relevant, because oh, that's... I, he has Fiendish. Wait, he doesn't have fiendish? Oh. What? No. Bunker ass. What? Hmm. <clears throat> oh, I've never seen that one before. Okay, so. To be fair, I thought I'm pretty sure this game was over anyway, but that was not good. Wait, I'm I'm missing something. Why? Wait. 
Yeah, why did he swing in the first place? Maybe he didn't realize that Veer could boost all spellcasters. Oh, wow. Hmm. Drowning, you already know. I mean, that would be <laughs> sick. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny if it's like, if it actually is drowning. I mean, if, if, this, if that's drowning, then this play swinging oh, well, into his meta. Yeah, he's clever. Yeah. It would have been like it would have been like 500 IQ. Exactly. <laughs> I hear he finished changed the veer, and then he and then he drownings everything. Damn. But he has the collaboration, so. Um... I mean, he, uh, that's what I'm saying. He finished changed the veer. Yeah. Definitely use collaboration on the wrong monster, because then you wanna you would want a collaboration something else so that they would finish. The, if they have finished, they can't use it on the veer. Oh yeah, for sure. So, he still uses the Sphinx Chain on a Veer. Canadia. Oh, okay, Canadia. But he still needs one more back row in order to... Uh... Yeah. You understand what I'm saying though, right? Like with the idea where you can... Um... Like if you if you use collaboration on the monster that isn't Veer, then like you can't finish chain the Veer. Yeah, because you're forced to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to stop the attack of the boosted monster, or the potentially boosted monster. Yeah, exactly. Oh, another Canadia. He's gonna hit that one. Wait a minute, that's game. Wait. That's game. Is that he has. Yeah. Oh, he's. Yeah, he has. Wait, that's not game. Right? No, because he's. No, that is he's game. Because it's gonna be. It's gonna. It's gonna be forty-five hundred into a five hundred attack monster. Check W. Wait. Um, so maybe wait. maybe crashing? No, because he's gonna he's gonna use Spectral Sword, banish um, Samurai Saga. Oh, Samurai you mean Saga's that, oh gonna, yeah, oh yeah, 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 oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you you were you were the, uh, you were already talking about the next turn. Never mind. I'm yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I meant it was game for the other player. Oh yeah, I was like, <laughs> you're saying it's game for smoke? What? <laughs> yeah, but you see what I'm talking about? Where, yeah. Like, if he had if he had collaboration on the Shmieta, then he would. I guess it wouldn't matter because then he would just Canadia the Shmieta and finish. But like, it would at least be, it would at least force him to have multiple. I right? mean, I mean, at least if he were forced to Canadia the Shmieta, then the Shmieta would at least be like back into defense position and stuff like that, and you wouldn't mm, be yeah. able to chain him otherwise. So yeah, and now he's just uh, flexing. Like he's yeah. going the very long way around when he already had. <laughs> Alright, so special summoning the Shogun, uh, Shogun Saga. Jeez. Damn. Damn, chess going in. Uh, banishes the, the Samurai Saga, boosting himself up and yeah. lowering the attack. Yeah, I'm my point was that, yeah, I was saying the same thing. He loses either way, yeah. but I just think it's more optimal to do it the other way. Yeah. Yeah, what? also, that, that's also true, right? Like, having the Veer in attack was not necessary to kill him. He was at 900. Oh, yeah. Alright, so, uh, <laughs> Smug going 1 2. Making the score 8 to 8. I guess, so that now makes we sense. Have a... I guess that makes sense why he crashed the Samurai Saga, because he was trying to get it into the grave so he could pull off this play. I mean, that's like. Uh, if it works, it works, right? It, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like. <clears throat> we were all thinking like, what the hell is Fido doing? But it was well, like, all planned. I guess it's, it's true. Like between like a Phoenix chain and a Canadian, he probably can't out. But I just realized something. How come he didn't flip up the? Um... Did he use? Did he Canadian on the Lila effect? Maybe he did. Yeah, Maybe no, I didn't he, notice he, that he did. No, he did Canadian on the Lila effect. Yeah, he did. So okay, he, okay. He I was wouldn't be able to like, destroy it, like you said. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. So he couldn't flip it back up. That's like a small thing because if you didn't do, if you flipped it down on the summon, then he would have been able to flip it back up to force one in the back row before tributing. So that's oh. one thing. So looks like they're repeating. No, smug is out. So did they just? Oh, you're uh, right. Yeah, they're out. Sending so they, another one. Yeah, they're sending. That another. was a pretty embarrassing loss. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I feel like you should never lose that matchup when you grasp someone. Oh yeah, th 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 this is gonna sting. Because like he could have even did like. Tribute Lila for Edel, and then use Edel effect to summon Lila, right? Like that would have been not bad either. No, for sure. 
Alright, so, um, let me see, did I forget something? Oh, smoke screen. Oh, here's another grass. Oh, wow. Man, Firu is getting it today. It's not that strong of a grass, actually. Let me see. So we have Shmeta, we have Two Holidays, Jenny. <coughs> like, it's like, it's pretty good, but it's not, like, amazing. But I guess that's fair, because he, he, I think he drew the grass off of the tour. And then he got the Minerva in the grave, which is kind of important for um, being aggressive. Yeah, the fact that Minerva is in the graveyard means that he can't <clears> like really bait single plays anymore. No, you can. It's uh, you can do it at any time because now oh, uh, any of your witchcrafters can become Edel and become Minerva. Oh, right, because of Jenny, right? Yeah, uh, or like, cause uh, you can just like holiday back a witchcrafter, oh. go into Edel, and then go into Minerva. That's like the main advantage of Minerva over Raiden. You can like constantly revive it and make any synchro you want. The other advantage is being able to access Brian Act, which uh, Raiden can't do with um, with the uh, witchcrafter engine. No. So this is something you've talked about like before right now because um, Kazuki is negated. Yeah, well, uh, I think I think generally like compared to Squire, Kazuki is a little more okay to like summon because you force them to discard a card, and then if you can protect it, then you can just send something again next turn, or if you can just protect it in general, you can use the effect of like, next turn to force them to negate, and then you can summon a Squire. So like there's like different options there. The problem is that even though you can do that, it's a really passive play. So even if he just passed, he would have he would on his end phase he's adding more cards to his hand. So yeah. Yeah. And he got back Makes charged, sense. so that's gonna be a Lila. Yeah. I thought it was really smart to hold the show of nightmares for this turn. Because a lot of times what can happen, which would kind of suck, is you use show of nightmares mm -hmm. and you get back a witchcrafter spell when you can't discard the witchcrafter spell. So then, like, if you could, if it's in the grave, you're gonna get back in the end phase anyways. Yeah. Right? So by holding it a turn, he's able to make sure that regardless of what he adds back, he's able to get value out of it. Oh yeah, because because of the, um, the spells, uh, like you you, you mm -hmm. get you're guaranteed to get your most of your witchcraft spells back anyway. So using your show of yeah. nightmares in order to get back your uh, charge great is uh, yeah, that's really that's, that's really nice. <laughs> And this way you can force that back row, get a light up, force that back row. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Also, like at the end of the day, I don't think it's a big deal to um, let them set up with Shiranui. Be like, uh, like obviously, like if he's going to go Gozuki, you can negate it. And then if he just summons a Squire after, like, it's not that big a deal to let them set up because they're just, like, you don't lose to that part of the deck, right? No, you, you mostly lose uh, what's already in the graveyard, I guess. Yeah. Or 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 uh in the the, the back row. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Depending on what the back row is. So then here he probably just sends the last spell. Alright. Oh. <laughs> the most Japanese play ever would be for Firu to go for Deka through Lila self milling. <laughs> when I played, um, when I was testing this deck originally, Gift did that to me a lot. That's why I was just like, I can't wait for Utopia, man, then I can exceed with my Lila. Damn. But uh, the problem with the uh, not Canadian the Lila is that. He already has Minerva in the grave, so you can, you can only really do that deck out stuff if um, 
that you know they don't have Econ or Minerva. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Alright, so next face of chain. Mm. I mean, he must have two, yeah. Well, right now it's just a matter of. Um, setting up. I think <laughs> it's a pretty high chance that he has enemy controller yeah. set, just because like there's not a lot of other cards you would set in this deck, <clears throat> and he already has masterpiece in the grave. <clears throat> like the funny thing is, is that if Fido is gonna win this match, Fido won two times against a deck that opened grass on him. Yeah, I mean I don't think they played optimally, but. Yeah, mm -hmm, that, that's, that's, true, that's, yeah. that's a discussion uh, <laughs> on itself. <clears throat> yeah. Man. I'm getting coronavirus. <laughs> Just saying it casually. I'm getting it, man. Mm Oh wow, that's... If he has a level... Actually no, he probably has a Econ, so it's fine. Actually, if he had Econ, he could have did more, like, a, a better play. Like, he could have Veer negated the Gazuki and then Shane Econ take the Solitaire. Stop the spectral sword. But well, does it work when the fear is already negated? Yeah, it does because uh, Fiendish Chain doesn't negate them if they leave the field. Also, this isn't game this time because no. he, uh, you need Samurai Saga to lower the fear anyways. It's only thirty-five. He's gonna get boosted up to 4500 attack. He's gonna draw from the Squire effect. And this guy is a solitaire. It's only tier 1 in the hands of a player. That's tier 1. <laughs> Yeah, like, if he doesn't die this turn, he's in a really good position, right? Because his opponent has, like, one back row, versus he has, like, six, like seven cards. Yeah. Choosing to take the 35, uh, probably saving the Econ, try to go for the game. Oh, it's, oh, it's not Econ. He's getting Econ now. So that back one needs to be something good. Yeah, so the Japanese builds, I've seen some that play double econ, a uh, double masterpiece, and that usually because they're playing Storm. But we haven't seen Storm at all, or I've Galaxy. Seen it once. So yeah. So next face of holiday, he's gonna special summon again. I know this is not looking actually too good for the Fero. I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh, 
or unless I'm missing something. Um. <clears throat> well, no, because uh, actually, no, you're right. Oh no, no, he can um, he can veer. He can okay. econ take the tuner. That's what he can do. Yeah. Oh, he also has um, the trap in the graveyard. Okay, yeah. Okay. He has so... the trap in the graveyard. So he's like, he's not at, he's not at risk of dying this turn. But yeah, that just seals the game. All right. So Priorin takes the game, which makes it match point for X Factors. Yeah. Can't beat grass that. Can't beat it twice. <laughs> so. Um... Fidu coming in hard with his last deck against Puritin. Uh Let me check on how Puritin is doing actually this season. I think he was one of the key players as well, or... No, he was uh, I don't know, actually. I, th I got him confused with someone else. I was about to say yeah. something. Oh yeah, he is one of the key players in the playoffs, for sure. Uh, uh, not in a regular season, but definitely pulling his weight in the... Uh, during the playoffs for the X-Factor, so... They got their hands full with, the, with this guy. Yeah. <clears throat> Pretty solid anchor. Uh, the scores need to be fixed. All right, mm. let's jump into the potentially final game. It's a mirror match. Jeez. Oh I have no idea how the mirror match works. <laughs> I know how the mirror match works, kind of. I played it when when the deck when the deck became a thing. My team played like nothing but mirrors for like a week or two straight. Oh my god. Um. So the most important thing about the mirror is the tuner. If you have a tuner, if you have a tuner and your opponent doesn't, you probably win. Vice versa, right? Oh, also. Okay. If you play Minerva and your opponent plays Raiden, you also probably win. The reason for that is because Raiden is not able to out Fortune Lady Every. So if you play Minerva, you can out Fortune Lady Every with Brianak. But if you play Raiden, you don't, you don't have that option, right? No, and you can't make Brianak. And there's uh, no rank okay. seven. That, there's no level seven synchro that outs it. Yeah, exactly. So, because then, he, you can go into black also, if, but he will come back. If you have a tuner and the other person does not have a tuner, then you can just win with every. The other thing about the mirror is that um, the trap card masterpiece is super important because if you don't have masterpiece in the grave, you can your opponent can very easily just like veer and negate your board or force you to negate back, and then make Brian act and bounce all your monsters and attack for game. Oh my god! <clears throat> it looks like wait, who broke? Looks like Firu bricked really hard, oh, but it doesn't just, look like um. Just a set. The other thing about the mirror that is um. Not is like the other thing about the mirror is, I if I go first, I usually don't summon Veer because there's not a lot of valuable things to negate. No. It's much more valuable to go like, uh, Shmieta into Pitori, and then go back into Shmieta so that on your next turn you have the draw and the, and the send to grave effect. Like, without even having to commit anything to the board. This is looking really bad, though. Like, this is probably just game. Oh no, not like this. Like, if he has two spells, he's already dead. Yeah. Oh no. Well, congratulations, X Factor. And just like that, X Factor takes out uh, Destiny Drop to score <clears throat> 10 to 8. Very close war. That is uh, one of the. Nicest wars uh, I've seen. I've yeah. I was talking myself. about like, I was talking about like, oh yeah, it's all about the tuner, and then it's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, and... before we talk about tuners, let's get some spells in our hand. You know? <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> oh my god! Like, uh, yeah. Um, GG to both teams, and congratulations to X Factors making it to the finals uh, yeah. in their debut season. That's, uh, yeah. that's actually something that's I think never has been done before. Like no other team has ever like 
made it to the finals in their debut season, except for season one teams, of course. But season one doesn't count, so. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> I have no nothing else to say. I think it was an insanely well played uh, uh, war from both sides. So. Oh, Smogon! Smogon, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, okay, never mind. X Factors, you're not as special. Sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe a um, quick interview from Smog, since he's the only person on X Factors that can. Oh no, there's Ricky, right? Is he still on X Factors? Is he not? But Smug is also the only person that didn't go even today. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Is it worth interviewing? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but if Smug uh, wants to uh, come in for a quick interview, uh, that would be awesome. I, I know that Amaba speaks English. Uh, uh, yeah. So so maybe Amaba as well. But isn't Amaba on Destiny Drill? Yeah, but like from both sides, I want to, you know, like a, no, okay. like a quick perspective. So I'm going to ask. Any, okay. Anyone up for a quick interview? Looks like um, I'll give them a minute. Yeah. And if nobody wants to come in for the commentate or for an interview, then. Yeah. Man, this is a really fun war to watch, actually. Yeah, like, I actually like, like it. I hope, I hope the other war is just like this. Oh, yeah. Speaking about the other war, make sure you guys tune in uh, Sunday. Um, uh, I think it's going to be Defusion against. Uh, Yo. Let me see. Let me see real quick. Yeah, it's a it's a D Fusion versus Neo is the next one. What is it? It's a Sunday. Oh, so there's nothing tomorrow. That's like, like the wars are a lot better, but then it's like there's not that many of them. Yeah, as it, uh, yeah, yeah, it's all because like the like the Japanese teams are just stepping up so much. Like the past few seasons, like like they're adapting so yeah. so good. So yeah. uh, all I'm gonna say is like the other teams step it up. <laughs> <laughs> feels bad, man. Feels bad, man. Was, the same really goes for my team, but. Such an honor to cast, cast like a top four game. Oh Pretty yeah, I was like so glad that I was approached to, <laughs> to uh, stream this game and and also that you were approached as well as my co-cast. Like I couldn't have it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like uh, thanks uh, thanks for joining me as well and accepting the offer from the guys. So uh, oh, no problem, yeah. So it's only because yeah. it's only because of you, man. Ah. Oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, it looks like that uh, uh, nobody from both sides wants to give an interview, and I can completely respect that. I think they're just like celebrating in the voice chat or whatever, and you know, just like uh, for, at least at least for X Factors and you know, DD, uh, like you know, you guys were already won one time. Give us a break, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm not gonna hold up the stream anymore. Um, Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for Sunday. And I'll to you guys later. Andy, you want to say anything else? No, dude. It's great, great cast. All right, all right. Um, yeah, um, see you guys Sunday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.